Good morning and welcome to Battle of the Lions 2022. My name is Jason Dupree. Oh, I did it wrong again. And this is Miles Keller. Thank you for joining me. <laughs> you know, I, I planned on yesterday having you sit over here and then I didn't adjust whenever I decided to switch. You know how it goes. That's okay. We are here at DFW Adventure Park in Fort Worth. What is this even? Considered? Well, it's so the North name North. of the race, if, you go, if you're going to Google it and you look up Battle of the Lions on it, you're going to call this uh, Battle of the Lions Dallas. Dallas. Okay. But or Battle of the Lions, uh, DFW. Most people consider this area Tarrant County, Fort Worth ish. We're actually in the city of Roanoke. That's right. So, Roanoke here. It's basically North Fort Worth here in Texas. It is a beautiful day. It is gorgeous right now. It's, it's going to get a little warm, though. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's been cooler in the mornings. It's yes. about the time here in Texas where it starts cooling down or whatnot. There might be some water crossings, things like that. That's always a big concern, you know. I mean, we'll talk about the course in a little bit, but I did get in the water yesterday, and it is chilly. So it's going to feel oh, nice yeah. after running hard. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, uh, all of the all the neighborhoods in the area, they have HOA pools. All the major pools are closed right now. Yeah. So it's yeah. hard. that's how you know when the water is starting to get too cold that's right. for most people. But I'm excited for this. Is this? I believe this is the second race in the in the Battle Alliance series. Yes, put they, on by two really great owners, uh, Sidney Paul Morris and David Main Prize. Yep, and I know Sid is probably out finishing up last second stuff as he always does. He's uh, they're running a little bit late for the start, but it shouldn't be too much. Um, I don't know what it is he's working on, but I know he's working hard. I mean, those guys stayed up super late last night to get this race ready for everybody. So. Yeah, I mean, it's a, I, they don't have a whole lot of uh, people to put together, so it's a lot of work for a small crew of guys. But they're a, they're a really good crew of guys. They put on amazing obstacles. So for those of you who might not be familiar with Battle of the Lions, it is a mandatory completion obstacle course race. Um, you're going to get some – the really cool part is that uh, David Main Prize and Cindy Paul Morris, they also help other um, – as kind of part of their job, they help other OCR races. They do put together the race, come up with obstacles. Uh, a whole bunch of the obstacles you may have seen in OCR World Championships, Battle of Lion obstacles, uh, or at least put together by these guys, inspired. They come up with the idea of Valkyrie 2.0, and Valkyrie, and things like that. These were inventions of uh, Sidney Paul Morris, as far as I as you far can, as I understand. You can actually right see now. Stairway 2.0 right behind us. So Stairway to Heaven, which started out as Conquer Gauntlet obstacle, where they it was all wood. A wood frame, wood steps, and they moved it to something that's obviously a lot of obstacles are going from wood over to scaffolding and metal, and it's just it lasts longer. Yeah. It's easier to maintain, and so you've got stairway with metal steps. I don't know really what you call them at this point, but they swing. Yeah, they swing. Those are not stationary. Those black T holds there, they're pretty. They're pretty thick. What do you say? It's probably about an inch and a half. Uh, thick on the side. Yeah, it's like a two by four. It's yeah. like a metal two by four. And you shouldn't be able to grab the trust. I've seen people grabbing the trust on those before. But what's interesting is, for, so most people are probably familiar with it. If you're a fan of OCR and you're watching this, you're probably familiar with Stairway to Heaven, the original wooden one. Mm -hmm. It's usually over water, like he says, and it's basically in the ninja world, they call those devil steps. Oh, yeah. Where there, it's just it, the backside of stairs where it goes up like this, back up like this, towards the middle. And then there's a gap trying to move my hands so I can see in the feed. <laughs> <laughs> There's a gap that you have to transition from here. And of course, it's usually underwater. This isn't over water, um, but it'll be it'll be really cool. Those move. So if you're uh, if you're not good at pull-ups, you know, it'll be interesting to see some of the techniques people are going to use to get over this. Uh, most of the athletes here that are going to be here. Um, there's a couple athletes uh, from out of Texas we know in the in the pro wave. Uh, but most of the athletes here in Texas, I think I'm proud to say that we uh, we may not be the fastest here in Texas, but we are uh, some of the best in mandatory completion races. Absolutely. We're really good at obstacles. And so this is where that – this is kind of a – it's derived from races like this being in this area, these mandatory completion races that have some more of the difficult obstacles. That's right. Conquer the Gauntlet and Battle of Lions has definitely prepped us for that kind of stuff. Yeah. And those have traditionally just been southern – races yeah all over it so. central central south south central now we were just looking at we got a, a picture in picture here showing some of the walls uh, our cameraman was just trying out twist on life uh theo we've got four excellent camera people today theo being one of them kevin harkins ac hale and robert yates uh, really excited to have these guys out with us we are seeing 
I think one of the cameras is being a little iffy, so you know, cell cell signal is pretty good out here, but you never know what it's like with everybody's different uh, cell carriers. So we'll get what we can, and uh, most of the shots are looking pretty good so far. Yeah, we'll be watching for comments, please. Oh, here's somebody go doing ahead. the uh, comment. Uh, we can address them. Make sure to like and subscribe as well, obviously. I'll do the quintessential like, subscribe, hit the bell, right? You don't have to smash it, but you can just press <laughs> it. You can just press it. It's okay. Oh, there goes somebody doing the twist on life again. Testing it out. So this race, let's talk about the obstacles that we're going to see and what the course is going to be like. Well, it looks like we got a low rig. Any of these mandatory completion races, one of the quintessential uh, aspects or obstacles you're going to get inside these races are rigs, right? And they tend to have the more difficult rigs. I noticed on this uh, on the map, I have not seen it myself, uh, the actual obstacle, but there's a low rig of yes. uh, some sort. I know the obstacle, the map there, here, I'll blow it up for us to see, but uh, it is not. I already put it somewhere else. You know, here's a fun fact. You'll see some other obstacles. That are um, there are permanent obstacles here. This is a permanent obstacle course because I used to actually train people out here on this on this course. They have a permanent course on site with some uh, maybe not more no rigs or anything like that, but simpler obstacles like things like log carries and things like that. So it's a uh, it's also um, this location this venue is a big paintball uh, park. They also do ski shooting, do all kinds of things. They do uh, they have a zip lining uh, deal they do. Um, but then they also have this permanent OCR course, which is nice for us here in Texas because not every state has a permanent OCR course. So if you look at the map on the south side of the, I say south, it's not really, on the bottom side of that big open area where there's some machinery and such, the red obstacles that you see, those are, some of those are the ones that are permanent ones. Yeah. So yeah. the walls, the hurdles, the low crawl, um, the, the, the rope climb that's right there. Uh, and, and the balance beams, those are all permanent obstacles. I think all of the red things are all permanent obstacles. Now, what's going to be interesting, if I remember right, by the balance beam, it's actually, it looks like it's a, a culvert. A lot of people confuse those. We'll see how many people try to go through them as opposed to over them and using them like a balance beam. Um, well, actually, you know what? We'll get another section. But we'll be interesting to see. Uh, we, it hasn't been raining that much, so this should be a pretty dry course. There is a ravine. I'm not sure how active the water is running through there. As with any race, you know, hey, if you can make people go through water, they're most likely going to make it go through water. Yeah, and like but, I saw yesterday, the water is not rushing. It's not. It's nice and mellow, yeah. but it is a little chilly. And, and it might actually feel really good to people, too. But and then it's also, a good ways into the race, too. So you can see kind of that backside uh, down at the bottom of the map where the water crossings are. So it, you have a while to get warmed up before you get over there and get in. So it's probably going to feel pretty good. Well, the other issue, too, is now just glancing at this map. I'm not sure if they're coming at clockwise or counterclockwise. But if you're coming out of that water and the very next obstacle is the low rig, it's going to be an issue. You're going to try and keep your hands as dry as possible coming out of the water into a... Uh, into a low rig but once again i don't think the water is that high um, most of the um, most of these athletes are here are experienced obstacle course racing athletes will know enough to keep their hands out of the uh out of the water i'm actually so, going to ask our uh, cameraman robert to come back and trade out phones with me and we'll see if maybe we can get a more steady shot so robert if you hear me come on back but uh let's talk a little bit more about the obstacles here that start is a bucket carry around that big open space. Oh, so let's talk about that for a second. That's actually kind of a really cool uh, thing that Battle of the Lions specifically does. At all the races, you're gonna start off with some sort of, of, of element that pertains to the name of the race. What you'll notice is uh, here, it said the, the name of this particular Battle of the Lions, Dallas, is called Complector, which means to, uh, I, had, <laughs> I had to look it up. I thought it was uh, Latin, but it means to uh, kind of grasp to encompass around so this is their grip intensive obstacle so you start immediately right off the start line with a with some sort of grip element uh you know if to say this was the strength race you'll probably start off with something that's strength related so on and so forth this is the only race in ocr that i know that will actually start out with uh something right on the finish line i mean excuse me right on the start line um 
So, and this will definitely tax your, your grip. They, they have these obstacles placed in such a way that it will burn out your grip. You notice looking on this map that there is a bunch of obstacles tied together there towards the, uh, here in the spectacle area. So that's wonderful. That's really great for the spectacles to be able to see, excuse me, for the spectators to be able to see, but it's gonna tax your grip. And going through this gauntlet of obstacles with tax grip, yeah, you're gonna know this race is specifically all about grip. And so uh, that will be interesting to see how that plays out. I did this race last year and and I'm pretty good at obstacles and so my grip's pretty good and boy was I getting, my grip was getting taxed for sure. But I love the creativity of these, uh, these obstacles. They're innovative, they're creative. Um, Sidney Paul Morris and David Main Prize are really good about always changing that up, um, keeping it new, right? I've always liked to, I always like to compare OCR to uh, how you make salsa. You go to different restaurants and you go to different places in different countries and there might be different salsas, right? But they all have different ingredients. And that's the beautiful part of that salsa is what makes it different. And so here is a salsa of our own here that have different elements. Oh, they're not making announcements. Yeah, so we were just talking about... Um, we're just talking about how this is their grip intensive uh, race. And so they're going to start right off the bat with some grip work. Yeah. Just like, and, and you know, it was, uh, just like they did last year. See, last year, remember what it was? It was, it was cylinder blocks. They had with, fat with, grips with on With fat them. grips, yep. yes. And you had to go, and that was straight off the, the start line. And, uh, you know, there's so many, there's so many guys in the pro wave that you had to stagger them into three waves. Unfortunately, I was in the third wave. I wanted to be in the first wave. Uh, but so this may not be any different. There's a we'll shot see. of those, I think there's a few buckets. less athletes than last year. So um, I know I know one thing I haven't tested, I don't believe, is these lavaliers that we have. They're both on the same system, so they should be synced up and not like we're next to each other and hopefully it's not causing an echo. Anybody in the comments hears that? It sounds good, sounds bad. Let us know so we can adjust and go from there. Yeah, and once again, I'm watching the comments, everyone. Hey, let us know what you think. Ask questions. Let me know what you uh, want us to uh, follow any particular person. Uh, let us know how you're doing. How's life? How you feeling? I'm excited to be out here, man. We're so fortunate that we have the to have the health and the the capability to be able to do this at all, right? Whether you come to the races and you walk the course and you have the physical capability, man, you're doing better than a lot of other people that are, wish they could do something like that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So we should celebrate the fact that we have that kind of fitness and that it kind of uh, helps. Speaking of fitness and health, one thing that I do worry about with this course is the climbs down into the ravine and the climbs out of them because they are steep and they they're have steep. ropes on them. Yeah. They're kind of skinny ropes. They are skinny. <laughs> they are skinny they're ropes. Not, I haven't seen those ropes in a couple of years. So they're probably, I'm guessing. I, I think skinnier. they are new, new ropes at, at least, but they are not going to be easy for the, maybe the everyday man that's out here just running for fun. The athletes, the uh, pros should have no problem with it. But I know yesterday climbing it with a gimbal in my hand was not an easy task. I got it oh, done, yeah. but it was, it was tricky. Yeah, yeah. Well, then you also did that. It sounds like you almost did it one-handed. Basically. Did yeah, you have yeah. to use the other hand when you're holding the gimbal? But that's... Hey, let's check this out. We'll see. We've got a shot. Oh, I've got some uh, buttons that are not working here. Give me just a moment. Looks like a shot of the low rig. Pretty straightforward. Some cool. Maybe a better shot over here. Here we go. Oh, yeah. We got a, a Y bar, a, a T bar, nunchuck. Tell you what, those are not easy holds, man. Oh, look at the rock grips on the. Those are going to be tricky because those are not the Skull Valley rock grips. Yeah, those actually look smaller. They are smaller. Looks. So I like the, I like the wheels. Oh, that's a difficult low rig. So keep in mind, look for at any of you that might oh. be watching and have not seen. Did you see what that is? Fit Fighter. It's not a nunchuck. It's a Fit Fighter steel hose for nunchuck. So it might be flexible. Oh, okay. That could throw you off big time. Yeah, but so cool. any of you that are not familiar with low rigs and low rigs, the, the, the goal is to get from one end to the other, hit the bell, and 
but you can't hit the ground. It's low, so you got to keep your core engaged, keep your center of gravity up, lift up your legs. That could be really difficult. This would be really cool to see how this one plays out. That looks like a pretty tough low rig right there. I'd say so. That will separate. That could definitely separate some people. Thanks, next, uh, next uh, Generation Designs. Appreciate you. They say it sounds good. Awesome. Fantastic. Oh, look at that. The wheels. Yes, not, the wheels are not stationary. They move as well. They the have entire a swing thing, they have a swing to them. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for oh, the rabbit goodness. that caught wow. that. Look at that one. Now, that's kind of a fat grip. It almost looked like um, Gibbons from far away, <laughs> like the, the, the hang part for Gibbons. But. Yeah, but it's definitely not one of those just nice, easy Force 5 uh, holds. We got some kids warming up at the start line. Oh, I love watching the, the kids race. I love it when they were doing the, uh, the Youth Lions. Yeah. And I'd come out here to try and uh, MC it just because I love to see the future generation of uh, OCR athletes. That's an awesome thing, too. David started, is it Young, young Lions? Yes, Young Lions. Yeah. As a, right before the <laughs> pandemic started, actually. He started Young Lions, and, you know, let's let's get more kids into racing. Obviously, bring up those young OCR athletes, get them into the sport and stuff. And so he started doing those all over, not just where other races are. And now you've got them here with Battle Alliance, but he's, they still do it at other races, too. So it's like a, almost like a separate thing. Yeah, it is almost everything, but that's a wonderful initiative, man. I love that. Look, we live in, in a time and a place now in history where um, kids are inside more than ever, not getting less physical activity. They're stuck, you know, just sitting there watching TV all day long, playing on their tablets, playing games. I mean, I get it. You and me both like games. I like it, too. But there should be a balance, right? Yeah. Being able to get out and go do uh, physical activity, get outside, get out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. And see how this beautiful, wonderful nature we have around us. Good way of getting to know our local area. As you can see, we got video footage here of the, one of the kids' waves going off. Yep. You know, Little, I, they, I there's tell, David Main Prize right there. Look at him leading the kids' <laughs> race. All right, let's go. Like I told you, I, oh, like you said, I love playing video games as well. But man, you got to get out and do some fun stuff. I tell my kids all the time, go outside, eat some dirt, let's do crazy stuff. You know, <laughs> hey, that's right. Hey, there's a lot. There's a lot to be shown. Actually, scientifically in biology, you have the thalamus gland. At this age, it goes away. It shrinks by the time you. I think you're like 11 or 12, somewhere around there. But this is where the B and T cells are learning immune response. So you, you want to be you want to be exposed. This is why it's important to be exp exposed to um, germs and bacteria when you're young, so that you build up the um, the memory cells for those sicknesses when you get older. Because the thalamus gland goes away um, as you get older. This is going to help them fight off sicknesses and illnesses later on. So just, yeah, rolling in the dirt. We joke about eating dirt. <laughs> I'm not saying go eat dirt. Okay, I'm not, <laughs> not going to say that, but being exposed to the elements and uh, at, when at a young age, this is wonderful. This is good for their health on top of the physical activity of running around. Yeah, look Did at that. Did you see them do that rope? Those kids killed it. Yeah, those kids are actually moving really fast. I'm really impressed. This is a great. This is a great kids course. I, so the kids course, he said, runs around that whole first area, just like the guys, oh. just like the pros are going to go through with their buckets. So it's it's a little bit more than that too, but they do that whole first section. Look at that! Yeah, they're coming into. So this section that he's running on here right now is the um, this part of the permanent course. It's part of the permanent course. This is also where, like we were talking about earlier, David Main Prize had the Youth Lions. He held it here at the same location. Of course, and, and with everything, he'll always switch up the course a little bit. I can't wait for people to be able to see the really cool warped wall we have right next to our, our booth here. Oh, yeah. Where we're broadcasting from right out front. You guys can't Good see job. it. But I, we'll eventually see it. You're going to see a really cool giant warped wall. They're always introducing new obstacles, man. I love the way uh, Sydney Paul Morris thinks. And they've done a good bit of uh, warp walls, but this is one of the bigger ones I've seen them do, I would say. I know they did one back in uh, Conquer Gauntlet, Atlanta, that was like a lot of the pros were having a hard time getting up it. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting? Like, we don't actually see a lot of warp wall in OCR in America, but it would seem to me that you see it all the time in Toughest Elite in Europe. Yep. Uh, you've seen it in um, 
the Canadian, there's the Canadian one, oh, I'm forgetting the name of it. Uh, radioactive or something of that nature. I don't know, forgive me to all oh, the right. Canadian the listeners, <laughs> but they have that, they have more warp wall. Here in America, we tend to not usually have much warp wall. We usually uh, equate it to the, uh, to a ninja obstacle, right? Yeah. Then of course there's mandatory completion races, especially this uh, it's like Conquer the Gauntlet, Battle of the Lions style races. You're gonna get more ninja obstacles and you use some uh, ninja holds. So it's always good practice. If you're looking to get better at OCR, yeah, go to a local ninja gym. Go practice on that. Go to a climbing gym. Go practice that and work on grip. Yeah, the, the crazy, like the really big obstacles that you see at a ninja gym, like uh, salmon ladder and that kind of Great stuff, run. the really big uh, rigs that they have. If you can do that stuff in those ninja gyms, you're going to be able to handle stuff on an obstacle course for the most part. Absolutely. It's just a good thing to throw into your training. I know quite a few elite athletes that will go to a climbing gym at least once a week once, maybe twice a week, uh, keep working on grip. And then for the, the people that is really good at grip, it's really easy to become complacent at it and to not uh, to not pay as uh, much attention to that in your training regimen. Right. Because you get you do OCR for years and years, and you're like, okay. And if you've got through many, many races without losing your band, you're like, okay, I feel confident. And you start slacking on that. I'll tell you what, it takes a race like this to all of a sudden make you change that uh, – to kind of shock your system a little bit and they're like oh i almost slipped off that obstacle or i didn't make it through that rig to remind you oh yeah i do need to make sure i continually implement that into my training regimen here's a shot of that warp wall that's going to be at the very end of the pro race that's the finish line not the finish line itself right the finish line is right after that but that is the very last obstacle oh, man. and it feels good you can see the sun beaming down on me <laughs> yeah, it's but funny. it feels great, man. I love it. I originally brought out a ring light to like light up our faces, but we got a perfect. <laughs> we got an actual kind of ring light right, right now. It's, it's a little bit too much. <laughs> That's okay. It'll move. The sun. Or I should say it moves. We revolve around the sun. It's not. It's not that weird. Yeah, we'll move out. We'll, we'll move out of the way. We got the sun. Don't worry about it. Giant ball of hydrogen. So, so this wolf wall right here, it is tall enough. And if you were good enough, you can get all the way up it. But they do have those ropes hanging down just because uh, it's, it's hard. Like I said, even for the pros to get up some of those taller walls, it's not the easiest thing, especially after you've been doing this kind of course. Well, also, imagine the shorter athletes, man. There's just some obstacles in OCR where being short or tall is uh, advantageous or disadvantageous. That's right. Like, imagine being a taller. So well, one of the guys going out today is a good friend of ours, TJ. Vivian's boy, a Vivian trans boyfriend. He's a taller guy. Yeah. And so he's got to work a lot harder than, say, myself to get through a low ring. Because it's, it's one thing for me to raise my legs up and engage my core and swing through and not have that in the back of my head that my feet are going to touch the ground. Let's say someone who's taller trying to get through a, a low rig like that. You got to. Oh, no, I messed it up. All oh, right, those pros look, yeah. Glenn yeah. Ray says, those bros look young. Hang on, let me yeah, take my... They, my <laughs> it's so good to hear from Glenn Rice. Man, he has an amazing story. He's an absolutely wonderful guy. Everyone gets to know. I remember a long time, uh, a couple years ago, we interviewed him on the Lincoln Durance podcast back when I still did that. Yeah. And it, still to this day, one of my favorite episodes. He has such an amazing story. So Glenn Race actually having a really good year too. He's I know he's been focusing he's, a bunch on deck of fit. See the sun in our eyes right now. Yeah, and yeah. We're backwards again. I'm gonna get uh, a. I'm gonna get here, glasses. Let's, let's show this. Hey, honey, grab glasses, sweetheart. Where is it? In the car? Yeah, babe. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna get pros. some sunglasses. Here. Yeah, I have some out as well. I could probably get. Let's take a look at. Yeah, so we're just having a bit of a late start here, guys. The pro waves haven't went off yet. Um. They're doing some last minute marking on the course. There's always, I mean, you never know what can happen obstacle course races. There's always little things that pop up here and there. Uh, things happen that you gotta make last minute adjustments. And I think that's what happened while they're doing those last minute adjustments. So we'll oh, see, no, just no. be patient it, with us. We're just hanging out. Five minutes it's great good. to see all the other athletes moving around, warming up, getting ready to go. So we are looking at the course five rig. This is like a mixture of the over under over that was at um, OCR, World, at OCR Championships. World Championships. Yes. But the middle section, instead of just having basically pegs, it's got all the holds for the course five stuff. 
So this is not an easy one because you go to a couple of the easier holds, but then you've got uh, some bombs and some nunchucks. And I think that's where it's going to get really tricky, especially the bigger bomb down at the bottom. Yeah, you see, going down has always been the easy part, right? Uh, so that's where they put the harder holds on. It's one thing to fly going down. You're just glad at these kind of rigs. You're glad when you've reached the apex. You're like, okay, boom, I'm, I'm, I'm on the way down. I'm on the easy part. But in this case, hey, man, nunchucks are always hard for everyone all the time, right? And then when you throw a larger cannonball in there like that, that's a different story, man. Like there's, if you don't know how to engage, you know, how to hold a larger, you know, that's a specifically a ninja obstacle. Right. So say here's the hold. You really want to make sure you get your fingers in between the hole like this so and you have. I'm not looking at you at the moment. Oh, okay, okay. There, there's, a, there's an example right there, yeah. yeah. Kind of just uh, putting that, the, the bar on top of it between your fingers. And I, I, I never really had this figured out. Like, what do I like more? Do I like it going in between my index finger or between my ring and, and yeah. uh, middle finger? Yeah, either one will work. The idea is to uh, get as much circumference of your hand on the grip as possible. Um, this is also what you're telling. If you've tried one of these holds with gloves, you'll notice it's a lot easier without the glove. Now, obviously, hey, say your hands have already torn at this point. I get it. But uh, holding this, thank you, sweetheart. My wonderful wife brought me my glasses. But oh, okay. I also nope. find that it's easier to hang on to when you lock off and you do that 90-degree elbow on the bomb as opposed to dead hanging from it. Well, now, it, the smaller ones, maybe not, but the bigger ones, I've got to really get that bent elbow. Well, this is so low that I don't think dead hanging is going <laughs> right. to be an option at, at all for anyone. Which you keep in mind the top ones, that the smaller ones that are hanging up, you could. Yeah, yeah, you TJ, could. But. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe not TJ. Well, you still have to lift up your legs a little bit. I mean, I'm only 5'7", and I couldn't. From that middle nunchuck, I don't think I could hold straight down. I still have to lift up my legs quite a bit. Mm. Now, keep in mind, so here's the interesting part you just mentioned. At some point, you got to lock off on a lot of these, right? Mm -hmm. This 90-degree angle, this lock off, notice how much more of this is bicep. So what's hard about that is, hey, man, not a lot of the female athletes can lock off because they're usually not bicep strong like that, right? So they, they found when you come short, to things so. like, say, Stairway 2.0, where locking yeah. off sometimes could be advantageous, they found kipping motions better come back to kind of circumvent that, right? I to transition from back. one hold to another, where there's a pull-up involved, where you can kind of use momentum yeah. to your advantage. Right. A lot of the females have a harder time locking up. So we'll, we'll see how that plays in the, in the women's wave. Speaking of the females, we've got uh, some shots. Well, we just had a shot of some of the pro women that are going to be running. Yeah, so let's talk about a few of the athletes here we got going on. Uh, we got Vivian Tran and Miranda Uber. Megan, uh, I believe Megan Beck is her last name. And, of course, Galia, um, Galia Goya. Help you might know her online as Luna. Goes. Good shot, Kevin. Uh, but all these athletes, they know mandatory completion races. Uh, Miranda Uber is here she's having a fantastic year she's been putting more training in than ever and she got third place at savage race dallas last week so i know she's psyched there's some i think there's something to be said for coming off a podium like that that does things for your confidence and that self-belief factor oh, for sure. we don't we don't talk about that a lot but self-belief can take you a long way especially hey say you're racing and you start losing eyesight start breaking eyesight of the guy in front of you and those mental demons start coming in and he starts thinking negative thoughts oh i'm not going to catch this person so on and so forth man having that little bit of extra confidence like you know what i'm going to catch them at the ring or they're going to slow down eventually keeping i got this in the bag that mental confidence and that positivity will go such a long way but all these athletes are really fast um Will be interesting to watch Are you staying in this area? how the obstacle proficiency against the speed yeah, goes. The back, like, now I'll go out on a limb and I'll say I think Vivian Tran is slightly faster runner than Miranda Uber, but Miranda Uber is better on the obstacles. I know Vivian Tran is working to to improve that and overcome that. And she's been working a bunch on obstacles and grip. So uh, we'll see how that plays out today. That'll be this will be a really fun race to watch. Here you can see in the shot uh, they just left was the uh, hoist. So there is yeah. a hoist. It's not a big one. It's not like something you see at Spartan, 
but you can see the trail here. This is kind of a lot of what we're going to see today. Some open trails like this, but it's all, for the most part, covered. Uh, very shady area, well, even with the kind of winter starting up. Not winter, but fall. Here's a, here's a really cool surprise we might actually come into. I don't know if you guys know, but like I said, this is a long, ongoing permanent OCR course. And what we have out here is a couple of longhorns. There's a bunch of cows, but there's a, there's a couple of longhorns. And this morning, I had to go to the bathroom. And so we're driving <laughs> we're driving the truck down a, a little back road pathway to try and get so I can see the porta potty off in the distance. And I'm trying to make it. And there is a giant longhorn in true Texas form sitting there just blocking the road, staring at us. And we're staring at him. <laughs> It's like, well, I don't want him to scrape and uh, scrape up my truck, so we're going to wait for him to he eventually move. Can we but say hello to? They could very well be on the course. Oh, the Miranda Uber. Miles there we go. Shot here. We were just. I heard you giving me a shout out earlier. We were. Well, we we're talking about you just came off the podium, third place at Savage Race in Dallas, so you have that confidence factor. Yeah. Uh, this is really your jam. You do really well in mandatory completion races and the obstacles. I was saying, uh, we'll see how that uh, your obstacle friction pays off. I think Vivian is a slightly faster runner, yep. but you're better on the obstacles. Yep, and, and I've got be... the transitions faster too. Yeah, yeah, the transition. Yep. That's yeah, that's huge. That's right. We didn't talk about the transitions. I'll talk more about the transitions later on. So we'll see how it plays. How how are you feeling? I feel good. I'm excited. Can't wait to get started. You know, I've been waiting. Um, Battle Alliance has had a couple races, and I haven't been able to make them. So looking forward to my first bottle of the year um, okay and yeah like you said this is within my wheelhouse i usually have some tough grippy obstacles so those are always fun for me and usually i excel there so uh yeah well we can't awesome. wait to see you and i know people want to see you on screen i heard they loved you during ocr world. <laughs> you commentated with bj jones on ocr world championship oh, yeah. right am i right i didn't get to see it but i, I heard can't wait to get like, commentating again yeah i that think that'd be great. Great. Yeah, hey, yeah come on yeah come if on whatever don't race in the well, what's funny is we train together all the time yeah. yeah and so we talk about it like it'd be we do the same thing whether it's on camera or not anyways right. the only difference is sometimes we talk philosophy too yeah. or it's more me dragging you into philosophical conversations <laughs> in the middle of our run yeah. but uh so i wanted to let y'all know so i obviously y'all are running a little behind or not y'all but the race mm -hmm. so the if you guys haven't already said this the cows came through last night and like destroyed all the course the marking tape. that was already that's completed. what i was afraid so of okay. that's why they're late it's not just some it's not just them running late it's so we were just got destroyed, we were so. just talking about the cows and there's pigs too and i actually oh, saw okay. some run through this morning oh i haven't yeah. seen the pigs yeah i saw some cows right here but yeah the cows yeah. are they big, wild hogs they are yep. they wild hogs yep oh yep. that's pretty cool I, I mean i don't know if they're javelinas or what they are but they say that they're pretty big. I saw them off in the distance. I couldn't tell. But you know, here in Texas, it's legal to hunt hog, wild hogs. Yep. You don't have to have a tag for it. They, so if you're out on the course, Miranda, and you, and you want to, like, know. you know, you kind of gap the competition, <laughs> and you want to take a, a knife with, with you, me. take a hog with you, yeah. you know, bring home the bacon, literally. Yeah. If you can I'm just cross trying the... to add that heavy carry through the finish line. Oh, up, man. up the warp wall with a yeah. giant hog on my shoulder. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah I would. I, I'm hungry. Awesome. I haven't ate this morning. It'd be great if you literally brought home the bacon. <laughs> I would be. Uh, I would not be mad. I'm just saying. I'm going to throw that out there. Well, thanks, yeah. Miranda. You gonna try it again. See you. you too. Rooting for you. Right, hold on. Here we got a shot of anchors They're interviewing by, Miranda. Um, race okay, ready obstacles. Done. So this is very similar to what you may see at Savage Race for um, anchors away. Yep. There's TJ and my lovely wife Marjorie. They've got some very, uh, you know, so TJ is running in the pro wave and he's playing on the obstacles right now. A lot of races, that's very discouraged, but uh, Battle Alliance, this is a pretty low key race. Nothing too uh, strict. Well, he's fixing to go off anyway. Yeah, should be good. yeah. there it's, we go. I mean, probably nobody's going to say anything. You know, some races are more strict about that stuff. Some of them aren't. Not a big deal. There's my beautiful wife. She normally likes to do the competitive wave. Yeah, she's not. Oh, familiar, she though. made it through. There she goes. Well, she hasn't been training as much. She's been working her butt off. Uh, so she decided today she's going to come out and run for fun and do the open wave. Car is running. <laughs> got those splattering. Let's see. Now we've got we've got a, a rabbit still out in the trails, just maybe hunting down the cows. Not really sure, but we got a lot of these long road trails, but then there's also some just cutting through that, uh, not brush, but you know, through the trees. Yeah, well, you can tell on the map that there's a, two really long sections of running. 
So, hey, this will be the place where Vivian Tran is going to want to try and get away from Miranda. You know, try and make that uh, make that gap and use the running. The runners are going to need to use this to their advantage. Now, I, I, I have seen the, uh, the lovely Megan Beck, the uh, OCR trainer. I've seen her online quite a bit for a long time. I don't know if her strength is more running or obstacles. I'm not sure. I know she's experienced and she obviously knows what she's doing. We'll see uh, what her strength is. She, you know, she came all the way down from Massachusetts for this. It's really oh, cool, awesome. man. I love to see people coming from out of state because we do have our little southern region has some very specific uh, races that are only to this area. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? And here Let's we've go. got nice you, man. Jason Rich. Jason Rich, if you watched our OCRWC coverage of 2021, commentated with us a bunch. Yes. And you're running pro today. I am. Cool how's deal, the, right? How's the field looking? Do you know how many people they've got? Uh, very small. Looks like small I'm, for the I'm, men and the women. Yeah, I'm, I think there's about five women and it seems probably about 10, maybe 15 men. Oh, that many? It may, if, if we're lucky. I know at least five, so there's not a lot of buckets. And I think we're all having a <laughs> right. bucket to start off with. The, I think it's about 400 meters with the, the bucket at the very, very beginning. Yeah. Well, so. to that point, that's why come out, hey, support the smaller races, man. You come out to these local races. Imagine kind of like what I was mentioning earlier, that the beautiful part of obstacle course racing is the variety, right? And and you have to support these races that have that variety. Without the variety, you know, it's going to nibble down the two or three race brands. That would be a little more boring. I love having the special local stuff like that. Up with their Ohio, they have the Indian Mud Run. That's become so famous. A lot of people travel from way out of state to go do an Indian Mud Run or sure. the abominable snow race that uh, Sidney Paul Morris and David Main Prize help put together every year up north. Honestly, this weekend is kind of tough. I mean, think yeah. about what's coming up. Next weekend, you've got Spartan here in the Dallas area. Yes, the weekend Saturday. after that, you no, got, no, and Savage got Race Central Savage Texas on Saturday. Central, yeah. down in Central Texas. And then on the weekend after, you've got Tough Mudder here in Dallas, too. So this is a pretty jam packed month full of uh, races in yeah this, area. this is well this is the this is where kind of our ocr season in texas uh kind of crescendos and comes in and usually about after these last races in october is where everyone starts yeah it's cold. Yeah, it's cold. yeah 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 we don't like the cold we don't like the cold i know i can i can talk for myself i'm a wuss in the cold I, you'll see me at the race i'll pretend like i'm all tough and it's not bothering me trust me it's definitely bothering me i'm shivering on the inside so I love it. We love this dry Texas heat. This is our jam. We train in it. We do really well. And it's been staying warmer and warmer uh, later on in the year. Jason, are you ready for the water in the river? I'm excited we get to get a little into it this year. Last time we were at this venue, it rained the night before and the river rose. So we weren't able to really get in the water. So that's actually refreshing. something I really wanted to talk about is that this venue has been nasty for a lot of the races that have been here. Yeah, that's true. It's always Flooded. rained. Yeah, yeah. You remember the first time? Uh, actually, I think it was 2018 when they had Conquer the Gauntlet Dallas. They actually had to stop people from getting into the or the river, the ravine, because they were getting it was, washed it was, away. Yeah, getting washed away. It was moving that strong. So it's really nice to have a beautiful weather from the start to the, the finish. And so that water is uh, nice and cool. Is it? It's it probably shock your system a little bit. But so, not too bad. It's so not freezing. I, I'm familiar with Sid. Uh, he had a battle race back in March right before COVID. And it was 40 degrees in the morning, 45 degrees in the morning. And he put us through a little pond <laughs> and the dunk walls in on top of it. All. Oh, I, I, man. I got ahead, though. I brought yeah. a little bag and put my shirt inside the bag, kept it dry, and then put it on afterwards and warmed me right back nice, up. Nice. Um, I'm not worried about that day because it's, it's 75 degrees right now. So it'll yeah. probably be a refreshing. Yeah, you're going to want to wear as little as possible today. It's going to yeah, feel nice, sure. I think. After, because it's like halfway through the course, so you'll be nice and hot. At that yeah, point. I think it's right before we get over on the low reef with some of the technical stuff. So I, the, the key there is making sure you keep your hands and everything dry with that. I think you'll probably have plenty of time to for your hands to dry off because once you get out of the water, you got to do some of the like the the stuff that's in the woods, the standard, uh, the permanent stuff, like the little slant wall okay. and some of that stuff. So nothing too crazy right away. Sid's finishing up right behind us. <laughs> Last bit of tape, and it looks like we'll hopefully be getting the pros off here very, very soon. Good to see you guys. Thank good you, to see you, Thank Jason. You for the no, man. Okay, I'm excited. We're gonna, cool. get, we're gonna get this thing going here in a few minutes. Let's see what shots we got going on here. Anything interesting happened yet? There's the the taping getting done. 
We got a, we, it looks to be a bucket and the what bucket is, carry right off the get go. What is the last, is that a, I, I, so they got the sandbag, so right next to us, you can't see it in, in our shot, but in the shot that you're looking at right now, you've got the sandbags. Oh, those are brute force balls. Yes. So they're like a, like a Atlas stone, but in a bag with sand in it. And so they're going to have to take those and lift them over those, over those bars, bars over there, which are I tell pretty you what, high. Those are pretty high. You're going to have to, let me see if I can. Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. See how, 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 how think, tall are you, Jason? I think my audio five, will seven? pick up. I'm 5'6". Okay, we're going to see how, how. I know this is going to be a little delayed for up. Up. They have to push those bags up over this bar. So what's interesting is that this wasn't in Battle of the Lions last year. So, the Grinch <laughs> horse will normally not have a bunch of heavy Get it over like this bar. Okay, this bar goes up that's to about tall. Jason's ear. And I want to say Jason's about 5'7". He's practicing it. Okay. I don't know if you have to go over. It looks heavy. Not too idea. heavy. It's doable. Jason threw it over. Am I going to pick it up too many more you times? My guys might not know. So you oh, they're in back. That, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so those are in the, uh, in the producer oh, yeah. chair. Back here in the director's chair. Oh. He's actually really good at obstacles and OCR himself. Throw my back out. He is, he is taking a, a back seat <laughs> to bring you guys this coverage. Absolutely. For a while. You know, my now. audio is disconnected from what you just saw right he's there. He's exceptionally good but, at it. Okay. That's right. a pretty high bar. So, yeah, that's a pretty high bar. It goes up to about your ear. I said you're about 5'7, right? 5'6. Five, 5'6, six. Five, six. okay. So it's about a 5'4. It's about a 5'4. It was called tall bar. Yeah. Okay, and do we know how many times they got to do that? Um, I, I believe four, because you got to go over twice there and back. Okay. Okay. This will be really cool to see. Everyone's getting amped up. Everyone's excited. We can feel the start of the race about to start. But like I was mentioning earlier, man, support your small races in your area and come out. And, and I say small, but this was not small last year. There was a bunch of people out here. So, and then once again, this is the second race in a four race series. Uh, the first race there in Oklahoma City got canceled. I'm not sure due to what uh, what the issue happened there, yeah, but it did sure get either. it did get canceled. But we have two more races in this series, and uh, very cool take. I think the winner today is going to get the, for the complector battle lines. Do they get a giant sword? Do they for this one? Is it? I don't see anything over there on the podiums, but I do believe they'll get something fun. Usually yeah, they, that's what they have, something something made out of metal. Yeah, I think they've had like a trident, they had a sword, a hammer, I think something of that nature. So every different race has its own theme. We'll see what happens a today. Hammer. I could be wrong. You see it there in the background. Pros to the start line. Okay. Pros are about to start. We're going to have the men first, and then I believe about 10 minutes after is going to be the women. No. No name on it. Sorry. Okay, right. so what you guys will notice is they have these orange vests. Now, this is their, this is signifying that they're in the pro wave. And if you cannot complete the obstacle, instead of giving them a band, you're going to give them this vest. I like this method. This is very telling for anyone who's judging the, uh, the obstacles, right? I do believe they want to get to a point where they're doing, like, printed vests, you know, like, like a think of toughest kind of stuff that those jerseys yes, that they yes. wear um whether you know toughest mutter or toughest in europe or um and con conquer oil well, and conquer the gauntlet continual yep OCR series, those vests, right yeah a, a lot of these companies uh sometimes it, it's more like your sponsors and stuff on that yeah. as well uh oh in europe that's what you see a lot of but, yeah have you ever noticed there in europe they do it's a lot less uh shirtless yeah. OCR. Sometimes I wonder if they come over here to America and they look at us and be like, what's up with all these uh, Americans early? And the North, the Canadians are the same way as us. The North Americans, the guys always run shirtless. Right. But I argue, hey, man, the whole strategy there is you want as least on you as possible. You don't want mud and water to get on your clothes to hang you, to hold you down. Let's try and listen in and, and hear what they're okay. discussing. Okay. I'm going to go listen to them. Men and women are going to be going together. It sounds like they have enough buckets for everybody. 
I'm gonna go listen to the rules. Okay. Okay. Not running? about warp wall? It's on the website. Penis. Penis too. No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what he's recording. I'm just ready to run. I don't have to pee again. Yeah, like pre-workout, liquid IV, I'm like ready to go. I know. And it looks like it is time to get this race kicked off. Men and women at the same time. We've changed our timer here to say reflect such. Miles is coming back to tell us about any news that he found. Let me put on my mic here. Okay, well, exactly as we thought. Uh, nothing, nothing, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, obviously, oh, except for on the low rig, they can use their legs. Matter of fact, he was mentioning that any battle lines event, you'll be able to use your legs on the uh, on the low rig. Interesting, because they don't really have a ton of. Oh, I think we're about to go. There we go. Like we said earlier, they're always going to start with an element. Now, normally on the grip course, they start with something that's grip they're intensive. Off. But this time, they're just starting with a bucket carry. Now, I don't know how much. I can't pick up one of those buckets right now. I wonder how much they weigh. But they're off. They're moving. And right out in front is Jason Rich. And Here comes Miranda. Miranda <laughs> Huber making a pass on the men. Right off go. the get-go. Let's go, yeah. Miranda. That is awesome. Going around some of the permanent obstacles there. The back of the field, you know, this is going to obviously take some time, take some stuff out of you. So, you know, do you rush through it? Do you power through? Well, not to mention, they're going to feel good as soon as they put it down. If you're a real fast runner here and you're confident about catching the other, everyone else, then you're going to, you can kind of hang back a little bit. And then as soon as you put down that, that bucket, you can get back on the gas. How do you think that this, this is pretty long? This is a long bucket, right? Yeah, it's about 400 meters at least. 
How do you think the guys and the girls, how do you think the guys are feeling about being passed by Miranda? Do you think they're trying to keep up with her or just with each other? <laughs> Man, I tell you what, if you've done an obstacle course uh, race, you've been checked by elite females enough. You know, we all have. Yeah, Alexandra Walker is, is uh, it, it's an endearing term of being checked when you're passed by yeah. an incredible female athlete. Hey man, it's humbling, and, and you uh, you just get used to it after a while. I've had Alexander Walker pass me. I don't know how many times on the longer races. Looks like Miranda's taking a walk break, but she is nice and out in the lead for the women. Do we know the gentleman that's running with Jason Rich here? No, I I missed his name. He came by the tents when uh, Jason was there uh, talking with us, so I do indeed m miss his name there. there now there's Doug. Doug Snyder. Yep, passing Miranda at this, or is that? I'm sorry. Her face is covered by no, the... No, that's uh, Vivian Tran. That's Vivian. Vivian Tran. She's She has her vest wrapped yeah. around her waist. Her and uh, her boyfriend, TJ, did the same thing. They both wrapped it around their waist. Here come the men back into the festival area. I don't know where they're going to put that bucket if they're going to take it through some obstacles. They'll probably have to put it right back down at the beginning so other people can continue to use it right off the get-go. That's true. The open wave very well might be using these right off the start like everyone else. They're not, so, they're not going through the triple steps that the kids do. <laughs> yep, here they come. All right, they yep, put right it down, the beginning. and they're going up. Now we have, I remember right, is a series of walls? Yes, first walls here. These are the same walls that you saw at OCRWC on the 100-meter course that they ended up taking out for the finals. You know, I really appreciate uh, about name? the 100-meter race. I, I'm glad they took out some of the elements that you can just jump past. Yes. Uh, that's been one of my small criticisms about OCR hey, World Championships Jason, uh, that Zane. I love so dearly um, is that it, it, the 100 meter race has really been dominated by the taller guys because they could leap from the start point to the end and hit the bells in some case. But adding a wall like that is going to totally change that. Here comes Miranda through the walls. Here we go. She's over. Doug looks Snyder's like, right behind her. Looks like Miranda's doing uh, nice with the. Um, you know, nobody, no women right behind her. Well, Vivian, no, Vivian's on the wall right behind her. Oh. She's keeping her in eye's distance. That's smart. You always want to keep your competition um, within eye's distance. If they tend to get away from you, it can mentally break you like we were talking about earlier. That's right. Here's our men running through the trails. Looks like Jason Rich is, it looks like he's putting on a nice gap already. Oh, wow. Okay, so I've seen this. I forget the name of this obstacle. You've seen this at OCR World Championships, and they had this last twist, year at Battle Twist on Lines. Life. Oh, Twist on Life. Okay, thank you. It's so what they're going to do is... Yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. It's forgive a, me. It's a hoist that you twist to hoist it up. But that takes a lot of twists. Now, keep in mind, man, all your grip is there in your forearms, and it's sometimes your tensile strength inside your hands, right? Mm -hmm. So they're pumping out their grip for these obstacles going forward right off the bat. Um, it would have been even worse had that first this started with some sort of farmer's carry or something grip intensive off the start line. Uh, but their their grip will be good enough to get through this. Now those bags, they're pretty heavy. They're not crazy heavy, but enough to where, hey, look how long they've been there. It's in there trying to crank that down. Now I like yeah, Miranda's technique. Look, she's using, so I haven't actually seen that one before. She's using both hands on there at the same time yes to turn it's not it's not crank 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 left right left right left right she's using both hands i think crank. it's more for a, a power thing like you're you're able to get better power by putting both hands on it you crank and then you you know, adjust and then crank again yeah because yeah those things are not light and miranda once again like she was mentioning on those transitions man i'm so proud of her look at her transitions are fantastic she's immediately getting in and out now tj's a pretty fast runner He's trying to catch some Miranda here. Yeah, is he going to find a way around her? Here we've got Jason so Rich going through some little hurdles. There's space to pass. Yeah, there's there's uh, space to pass there. It's not necessarily a one-track path. Now, you, you can see this. It's a lot of low-hanging stuff, so you got to duck a lot through this race. All right, you guys ready to do yeah, this area is even more beautiful during the... Uh, during the summertime, when there's more foliage, but we're coming in the fall time now, so you're starting to see some all these, all these leaves fall off the trees. So you're gonna see a lot more dead branches and debris. Now, one of the things they did mention out there, you guys might not be able to tell, on the audio, is that hey, there's a lot of thorns. Yes. There's a lot of thorn bushes on this. 
You're gonna get. I hope you're wearing long socks today. This is one of the reasons uh, I remind everyone, hey, when you come out here, make sure you wear long socks. There's lots of thorny patches, and, here and you're gonna scrape up your legs. Rope climb and balance beam. So this is some of the permanent stuff that we see out on the sports. Yeah, yeah. And that's not, and that one's not too hard. Yep. It's a pretty thick brick. Yep, yep, yep. It's not Over. too big of a deal. These walls right here are new to the permanent course. Yes. DJ's in fourth. We're getting from our cameraman, Kevin. Okay, he's in fourth. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Actually, that is... Hell of a rabbit giving us update. Yeah, it's Kevin. We've got Robert <laughs> there with him. Hey, once again, guys, we appreciate the commentary and the live feed. Make sure to like and subscribe. Send us any questions you have. Let us know how everything's going. Do we have Vivian still right behind Miranda? Yeah, well, she needs to keep her into, uh, she needs to keep her with a nice sight. Now, TJ just went under that little wall. Who knows? Is it is it a up and over wall? Is it a? It's an over under through, if I remember right. Uh, it's on the permanent course. Yeah, they did spell that, that out. Yep, yeah, and that's not that's barbed wire. That's high enough to where look, even someone as tall as TJ can kind of bounce through like that. Way to go, TJ. Miranda's through. Yeah, me. Vivian really needs if she's gonna if she's gonna use her running to her advantage. She needs to push. She needs to start pushing Miranda here on these long runs. But yeah, like you said, there's still plenty of room. Like this is really more one of the. Uh, got, uh, gauntlets of obstacles. We did get from uh, Kevin that is that Doug is in third place. Yep, that's Doug. He's doing fantastic. Looks like Jason's still out in the lead. Some more of the permanent stuff. Again, part of the gauntlet here. Uh, you got some teeter tubes. They don't they don't actually teeter here, but you got to go up and over those. The first Not open wave is going off now. Oh yeah. And they are indeed using the buckets. Everyone's starting off with the bucket here. We've actually got, oh, we just missed it. Missed, just missed them going out. We've got our stat, static shot at the start line here. All right. So like I was saying, the, the permanent area with all the permanent obstacles is a kind of a, a gauntlet of obstacles there before you get into, so we really haven't gotten into the long open running yet. Some bigger walls. You can see they're they're concreted in. So this is the the, the backpack of the women, I believe. Yep, and the ladies are toe to toe. They are as a three. Let's of them go, right Megan. There. Oh, we got to tie the shoe. Go. Oh no! It's important, but it'll slow oh, you down. Oh no! Third place there. We've all had that happen. Anytime you look down, and your shoe has came untied during the race. You're wondering, hey, do I just keep going? <laughs> Do I keep going because you really, because look, she just got passed because of it, right? Well, I mean, you're counting, seen, you're gambling at this point that, hey, you're going to slow down at some point, you're going to have to pass that person. I've even seen that happen with Ryan Atkins racing against Hobie Call. <laughs> oh, yeah, time. yeah, yeah, true, true. <laughs> it does happen. It happens to the best of us. That's a gamble. If I was Ryan Atkins chasing a Hobie Call or vice versa, I'm not stopping to tie my shoe. That's right. Doug going through the tubes. So those are the balance beams I was saying that I think that most people, oh no. So this is actually, you're no, supposed Doug. to go underneath there. You're not supposed to go over that. You're supposed to go underneath that tank, but uh, <laughs> say la vie, yeah. as the French say. <laughs> and Vivian making her way into the woods, I believe. Look at this. Ooh. Look at this that Doug's running through. You're following that tape, but there is no real trail right here. Yeah, so this is really interesting. you got to stay to the left of the tape right here, right? Yeah. But notice how there is a faster and a better way to get through, depending on where you're running, right? It's right. not. This is not a one-track section right there. So you could pick one way through there, Yes. but you could very easily kind of mess yourself up not realizing there's – Hey, there's a, a twig or a tree or something there you didn't realize poking out. <laughs> That's right. It, someone's definitely catching the spider webs too. That's always fun. Yeah, Anyone I, who runs the trails early in the morning knows about the spider oh, webs. Absolutely. I always come off of these trails with scratches all over my back because I run shirtless. And there we then, go. You know, all these branches catch you as you're going under them. Oh, wait. Oh, no. You changed your mind. You changed your mind. <laughs> well, they're both going over, so I guess it works. <laughs> okay, I guess this, this obstacle has changed to over. He started to. I wonder what she was thinking when that happened. TJ is catching up to, uh, I'm going to say, is that that's Doug, I believe. 
Now, TJ is a quite a fast runner, just like Vivian, and they've not been in OCR for very long, you know, a year, two years? Uh, they started the last year. Matter of fact, so we've got Battle of the Lions here. Dallas was Vivian's first race when she was actually wow. training under Kevin Harkins, right? So that was her first race. This is, uh, this is a bit of a homecoming oh, for Vivian and, Tran. And Vivian has caught up to Miranda. Now, I remember in that race, Vivian got caught up on the rig. And this Good. is this is not obviously not a runnable. Now that now they're into a runnable here. Yeah, this is where she needs to capitalize on the running. And Vivian's passed Miranda up. Now Miranda's really going to be relying on her upper body strength and her obstacle proficiency to to try and win this race. Yeah, she knows she's most likely not going to outrun her. Okay, here's the guys. Okay, we've got a couple guys. They got their fourth they... and fifth. No, second, third, and fourth, I believe. Now, I don't know if this is their first try. They may have, they look like they're bent over. I wonder if they've already tried this before. TJ and, and Doug just got here, but the other gentleman, uh, he probably, he may have tried already. He does look like he could have. Yeah, they look time. tired. They look tired. So that means Jason Rich is already through this obstacle. Now, this is exactly what I was talking about. Look how hard this is for taller guys like TJ. You're wasting time this hanging. Just can't go. can't touch the ground. They do. He has to restart it. But they're saying you can use your feet You can use your feet. Too. Yep. So, okay. Well, I tell you what, though. The only thing I don't like about that in these elements is that it makes it harder for the people behind you. Yeah. Uh, especially if you got mud on your shoes. Man, you're making those grips much harder. I... Nice, see how much of a Come on, just go. Is. Now notice just go, job, how bang. he's locking off at a 90 degree angle. Job, this is really difficult for the ladies, man. Not everyone. Okay, bummer. That, oh, job, man, Doug. That's, it's that nunchuck that's giving him trouble. And it looks like Doug's getting past. Doug has really good obstacle proficiency. This is he not going to be a problem for a Doug. That's going to put he's got, Doug in second place here. Now he's got to get up on top right. of the bar. You do have to spin yourself around. Looks like, I guess, you can That's use not the other side. Bad. Yep, and you can just kind of slide down. Yep, there you go. Bingo. You're second, Got bro. It. You're second. Okay. And look at this. Oh, Women coming right behind them. Yeah, well, TJ, TJ's not. Oh, TJ must have fell off. We missed that. Okay. So, Jason Rich in first. And actually, we've got Jason Rich going through this uh, back and forth with a cinder block in his hand. You already saw it. We're going to come back to him in a second. Miranda... Pass it up. I mean, they're they're basically side by side right now. So, cool fact about Miranda Uber: she's an engineer. Okay, an engineer's very logical. Look at this. Very technical Look thinking. At this. She is. She looked at this. No and problem. She's working her way through it. Yep. Beautiful. Here you can see. She's not going to let something a difficult rig like that freak her out mentally. She's going to logically process it. Doug, hold at a time. There's and Doug move with through the it. Lock. Miranda through. No problem. The, uh, Vivian's still fighting through it. She's not off yet. She's almost there. All right, she's got her feet hooked. Usually that means once you get your feet hooked on the end that you're good to go. But you still do have to get yourself. It's just going to take her a little more time, but I don't expect her to fall off at this point. So she's made it through. So she's going to have a gap on her. We've got uh, yeah, she's Kevin Harkins going to give us an update here. Kevin, go ahead with an update. <laughs> yeah, it's a little warm. A little warm, but Doug, no, Doug's here in second, sorry. Dave is up there in the first, finishing Z's, if you can see in the background. That's first. Woo. Yeah, right here is Doug carrying the cinder block. Back and forth, it's just zigzag, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So TJ dropped. Zane is the second place, or was in second. Zane's the other guy uh, battling out with TJ back at the uh, Valkyrie rig. But uh, we're going to keep going here, I think, with, ow, Briars. Uh, I'll follow Doug in second, and here comes Miranda. Uh, third overall, Miranda just got into the Z's back there. Uh, she's coming around. There's Sid taking photos. Awesome build. Course builder. Right here's Doug. You can see Miranda in the back. She's doing her zigs. Job, Doug. It's just a brick. It's a half a cylinder. Half a cylinder, zigzagging back and forth. Right there's Miranda coming out of the woods. Let's go, Miranda. Vivian just started into the Z's. Vivian's just started. She's got her cylinder. And then there's Zane following Vivian. 
So you got Zane coming back. Zane, Vivian, Miranda, Doug is right here. And I think it's David or Jason. David oh, in yeah, first. That's where we're at here on the Z's. Are you looking to run for the first time? Let's go to the start line. Is he done talking? I can't hear him. Yeah, yeah, he's done. He's done talking. Okay. Hey, appreciate it, Jason Williams. Thank you for the wonderful words of encouragement. And Jonathan Crawford asked, "Hey, how many miles are we looking at here?" I think this is three to four. Three to four. Yeah. Yeah. Should be three to four miles. Not long. Now we've got. And it looks like everyone has made it through that obstacle there. Miranda is well into the center block carry through the back and forth. So this is interesting. This is a mental thing. So oh, yeah. notice how you could be ahead or behind, and you're going to see the competition on the next lane over from you as you're running through this section of the open field. You can see the other lanes right there. So, But you can see how many lanes there are, too. This is a long back and forth. Yeah, this is a really long back and forth. Job, and it's also nice a job. great way of keeping your eyes on the competition. And, and looks like Vivian is still, I don't know, maybe two to three lanes behind her. Yeah, it's hard to tell from that angle. Miranda's doing great. Now, I went through this yesterday and kind of helped to, to retape some stuff to make sure that it's uh, clear on where you turn and where you, you know, that way you don't pass up a lane. So it should be pretty clean unless the cows came and got it all. Yeah, well, not to mention, speaking of cows, there's tons of cow paddocks too. <laughs> yeah, there's true. tons of <laughs> That's another common thing out here on this because of the cows everywhere, free roaming. So you can see where they're dropping off those uh, center blocks that some of the guys just came through and dropped theirs off, and they're moving on from here. Okay, so what you can't tell quite, I know this trail really well, that mud right there, that's solidified. It's not wet out, it's solidified, but that's also an ankle breaker. Yes. That is hard ground right there, and if you're not careful, you could roll an ankle really easy Absolutely. when uh, that is so undulating and such. And if it was, if it had rained any lately, that would be a, a slop mess. But yeah, it would be a sloppy mess, but you, it wouldn't mess with your ankle stability right. as much. It would a little, but I'm telling you, it's almost like running on the on the ground where it's it is a bunch of divots and pivots and holes everywhere when it's hard. I find that more difficult than when it's uh, rainy. Depending, it, 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 most of us probably have trail shoes on when you're doing, so you're not so worried about water and mud. You got a lot so you just going. did that back and forth all the way down, and now they got to run through that worst. really dry, craggy huh. stuff all the way back. And there you can see one of the women on the back and forth still. Yeah, this stuff is just yeah. See, that, okay, that's rough. a good. That's a good view. Thank you so much for a rabbit. I bet that's Jason. That's Kevin. That's Kevin. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you can see how difficult that can be. Miranda is through the back end of the back and forth. Now she's going to be coming around to oh, where Doug just was. So that's not too heavy. That's one one half of one of those cinder blocks. I'm sure the men are carrying the entire cinder block. You know what's hey, you know what's really funny about this Ow. is that the you'll notice on those vests it says F three. <laughs> At F three they use cinder blocks. Yes. It's this faith based uh, fitness organization and they use the cinder blocks. They call them coupons. Yeah. So it's kind of fitting somehow. I don't think this was on purpose, but it's almost fitting uh, how the uh, they're using cinder blocks and F3 based uh, vests. Now Doug is out. You know he's done with his cinder blocks, so he's heading on. And this is where I think we're gonna have maybe a couple obstacles here and there, but you don't have a gauntlet. You get a lot more running. Run, Miranda. I see Miranda walking with it. She knows she has a pretty good lead. She's walking with a cinder block. She does. Oh, I see. I want to go yell at her. We've got Jason Rich at the low rig. Let's see how he does with those nunchuck looking hoses. The, uh, this is smart. He's going to start at the second. He's going to skip right past him. We're 20 minutes in. He's nice in the lead. Pretty comfortable lead, I believe. Yep. Not using his yep. feet. Those rock holds are not easy to grip. They're not like the using the Skull Valley holds. But he's made through just fine. Jason does train a lot of ninja type stuff. He got it nice. Okay, well he's done. good. And then right back into the run. Good on him, man. I'll tell you what, those are really sometimes the technically difficult low rigs like that can tire you out more mentally than physically. 
it goes, right. you're just, you're just kind of nervous as you go through it. Those may have been holds he's never touched before. Now we were talking about how the, what are, what are they carrying? It's, it's a half a cinder block. It's not very heavy, but that's something that really, oh, it's, it's a test in itself. When you have something that is light, you feel like you should be able to run with it, you know? So yeah. how fast do you run? Cause it is still stressing you. It's just not as much as like a really heavy wreck bag. That way, that way. Oh, this way. Crossed over the line. She's got to go to the oh, right there. Me. Go, Vivian, go. I hear a fast one. So. And it's like, uh, I think that's Doug. You can see our cameraman having to dodge all these low branches and stuff. It's not easy going through there. No, no. And once again, like I was mentioning earlier, hey, there's a bunch of briar patches. There's a bunch of thorns. This is not the easiest of terrain, I'll tell you what. Doug at the low rig. Now, look, Doug is no no beginner to OCR. He's done a bunch of low rigs. He's a really smart guy. Look at him. He's strategizing on it right now. He's also a little taller. I'd not say he's about 6'1". Well, I know it doesn't tend to be considered <laughs> tall. I guess that's like the average. It's tall for my 5'7", oh, sure. self, right? So he's going to probably try and reach out on the second – start on the second or third grip. If he can use his height to his advantage as it's about to become harder trying to keep his core engaged. Try a time sync uh, tool here to try and help our cameras stay in sync. We'll see how it goes. Oh, look, his feet are close to the ground. Is they are. Yep, there he is. Oh, Ooh. oh, oh. It, I mean, that uh, looked that like, looked a, like touch, a foot. But yeah, that looked like his foot it, touched the ground. It could be, you know, a lot of the races, of, uh, rules and races are different. It could well, be a graze. Well, no, this could be the angle at which we're looking at it. His right. feet may not have actually touched the ground. But it also could be a graze is okay. You know, as long as it's not, uh, uh, I mean, he's yeah. through, he's done. Well, generally it's not. Mandatory completion races, man. Your foot touches the ground in any shape, form, or manner. You redo it. OCRWC has a pretty good, if it doesn't cause forward motion, no, that's right. They recently clarified that. They clarified not, that not last motion, year, right? If, got if it is a graze, right. Last year, if it's a graze, you're good. Well, it's harder to tell at OCR World Championship, too, because they use a lot of hay. A lot of hay, right. A lot of hay underneath. So it's hard to tell, hey, did the foot touch the graze the hay or did it touch the ground? Brandon Huber in first place at the rig. I don't expect her to have any tr troubles with this, but, you know, this well, is Well, this a is an interesting technique. Look how she just double-fisted. She used a false grip on the... On the second hold, and then just decided to transition right over there like, it's like that. Like our sink tools causing some yeah. Lags. She's we're gonna turn so she's going to take her time and she's going to casually move through. Crazy by crazy. once again, guys, if you didn't mention uh, hear it earlier, you can indeed use your legs on the low rig. And I expect Vivian coming through here. She's not going to be any faster than Miranda. So if Miranda takes her time, uh, she's going to be okay. But keep in mind too, at the same time, look. The longer you're suspending, you're like this. She's She's taxing her grip. Yes. Um, I know Miranda well. She normally moves through rigs faster than this. She's taxing her grip quite a bit. Well, one thing about using your feet instead of just swinging through is you don't get those big swings. You don't get the big reaches. Well, she's at an interesting little angle right here. <laughs> that it's... There's Vivian right behind her. Yep. And there you go, Miranda. Come on, Vivian. Scale. Get on the obstacle. There she goes. You know, it's so funny. So. This was the same exact situation last weekend at Savage Race in Dallas. <laughs> Vivian was coming up to it as Miranda was about to get on. And me and Vivian are good friends. I hassled her a bunch after the race. I, call, I called her. I sent her a screenshot. And I'm like, just go, Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> and she go, okay, okay. That got, my, my voice got in her head. And now she's thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, when you're fighting for it, sometimes you just got to not take that extra breath and just go. Well, so much of OCR is about being smooth, getting into the obstacle and out of the obstacle, running in, running into the obstacle, they're running right out of it. So smooth transitions between. You can lose so many seconds because the natural thing you want to do is when you come off an obstacle, especially if it's hard, is try and catch your breath, walk away from it. You really shouldn't. You really need to run away from it. You need to run right up to it, attack it immediately, learn to breathe through the obstacle, and then get right back in the running. Also, the thing you can do is, uh, you most naturally want to do, and in many cases, is want to hold your breath. When going through the obstacle is you're like engaging your strength so much, but that makes it harder to get back into the running at the end. Darn it, Vivian fell off. Okay.
okay. She looked like she was starting to pass Miranda up. Yeah, she was. She was moving faster through. Wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Come on, Miranda. No, 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 no. Oh, bummer. Now, we have oh, bummer. Okay, we got four cameras at the ring. Right yeah, we have an interesting situation. So, like we were mentioning earlier, right, these mandatory completion races, it's not uncommon to find people, the pro wave, held up at, the, at a rig where uh, is, it might take them multiple attempts. This is kind of the cool thing about the mandatory completion races, and especially some of the harder obstacle races we have here in the South, is that, man, this could totally change the field. You could be a slower runner. You could catch up to this, pass them, and possibly win. That's right. Because of your obstacle proficiency and not just your speed. One of my best, almost best performances is I came out of a rig at Concord of Gauntlet in Tulsa that everybody was having trouble with, and I was in third. And I had issues with Pegatron at the end, and I didn't was that, that the one with place. the giant pipe? Yes. Oh wow! Yeah. I got That's through infamous. it on the first try, and probably nice nobody rest. else nice was. Rest. The entire field got stuck there. Yep. I remember that, and you got stuck at Pegatron. Yep. At, which you, was right before the finish. Oh, man, At that's the rough. time, I was getting to where my energy just would burn out. And by the time I got to Pegatron, I had nothing left. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Pegatron is a Conquer the Gauntlet obstacle that is a horizontal pegboard. So difficult, many people cannot get through it. Matter of fact, there was a time in which no one in the female way could go. get through it. There you and go. And then they put now a block in the middle. That's right. And women started getting through Look it. Look at it's this. Really difficult. Shaking his hands out. Wow. What a showman. Nice. What a showman. He's making me nervous with where his legs are, though, I tell you. You get twisted up weird and you get you fall out of it, it's going to hurt. Which is why, you know, that's kind of stuff that a lot of races don't allow such things because, you know, people hurt themselves in weird ways. It's just how the world is. Oh, come on. No, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Oh. Son of a gun. So here's the really hard part about this. When you're that far into this grip-intensive rig, your grip is so tight. You up. see Miranda there trying to recover her, her grip. I know they're wanting there? to use their feet, but I, I'm wondering if you went through faster, just hanging, would it save your grip? Yeah, so you have so much time of grip in your forearms. Okay, And now at this point, once you've went through it and you've taxed your grip a bunch, Vivian's you have a less time, obviously. It takes longer. Now, what's really smart about these ladies is that they didn't try it back to back. Yeah. If you try it back to back, it takes your, your forearms exponentially longer to recover your grip. And, and you can even see Miranda uh, beating out her, her forearms. But, you know, they're sitting here waiting. But honestly, this is just the kind of thing that these races do. This is These races are known for being hard. And yeah. It's not like the top 10 people are going to make it through nice and smooth. Like, this could be a battle all day. Not all day, but sitting at this rig. Yeah. And we've actually got TJ still trying. Where's he at? Oh, I lost the. Uh, I believe TJ is still at the over under, the Force 5 over under over here. Now, this is another beautiful thing about OCR. You guys can't hear this, but inside my headset, I can hear Miranda helping Vivian <laughs> strategy through the rig. <laughs> this is the first and second place female helping each other. There's my beautiful wife going through over under through. And, and TJ, I don't know how many times he's tried here, but I think if he can just get a good swing through this instead of trying, I don't know. He's so he's so tall. He's got such long arms. I think if he just swings through it, he could. You just gotta pass up that. Uh, get the bomb at the top. Pass over the uh, the bar. Now he's he's go for the ball. Swing and skip the long there. Shot. That's hard to recover from, but now he's straight oh. out. Oh, Marjorie. <sighs> See, that's the reach you want. So and you get your hand on top of the ball. Like hands are hurting them already. Painful. Painful to see my soulmate stuck here. I want. I wish I'd go out there and go help her. There's Miranda. On the first, there's two of those boards. And she's about halfway rockers. through now. And it looks like the third place female is okay, caught here. up. Yeah, now here is Galia, a.k.a. Luna Lou. Galia is really excellent at obstacles. She doesn't live too far away from the ninja gym, mm. and I guarantee you she's been uh, training on it. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say she makes it through here first try. If she makes it through, that's going to be huge. Yeah. She's going to make up a lot of ground. I, I, I trained her here and there at the obstacle gym. I know her proficiency. Oh, no. Okay. Not quite. She, uh, it's, nope, she came off. It's I'm those wrong. daggone 
rock grips. They suck. Well, <laughs> they're, they're small. Yeah, what well, you guys can't tell in this video is that they're smaller rock grips. Now, at the moment, the front runner guys are down in the creek, and hopefully we'll get some shots back there, but we're not sending our cameramen down into the creek because the uh, they have to use ropes to get down there. Yeah, it's harder to get back out and to hold the gimbal and the, the video and everything. We'll see them when they come out. Oh, bummer. Okay, baby, coming back there you up. go, Miles. Oh, there we go. <laughs> There's my soulmate and best friend. Skip the numbers. Oh, we do need to check. So, no. You know what's it? Miranda is, is getting close to the end of this. She's trying to rest up, but she's almost done. She's got to get past this one board. Well, I say she's not almost done. She has to redo it, man. She's nowhere near done. She's got to go back to the beginning. No, uh, Miranda. Oh, no. Miranda, okay. Yeah. yeah From that point on, if oh, you can get man, past that right board... There. You've got just a couple more holds. Wow. Well, yeah, that is rough. I wonder if we're going to get, uh, I wonder if there's going to be any females complete this today. Man, and that's why I thought Galia would get through it on the first time. I know her obstacle proficiency. She's really good. And, and people, people will complain, you know, this kind of course is too Come whatever. Here. It's too hard. It's, it's, it's no good that nobody finished it. But like, honestly, oh, we don't have, we're waiting on athletes to come through at the back end here. But honestly, I like that there's variety. I like that there's races out here. You don't have to do it, but yeah. there's races that are this hard, and that's awesome. Well, this is gonna what this will do is it also attracts some of the other people that might be sitting here watching, saying, "Hey, you, I can get through that obstacle. I practice at Ninja Gyms all the time. I just I'm not a fast runner, so I was too scared to show up at the start line. Well, hell, if you walk this course and, and you're good at obstacles, you may have passed them by now, right? Like, so that'll bring some other people." Like thinking, if, if I was back. in normal training mode, I feel like I could get through that rig, and that would put me in third place, even if I was slower than these guys running. And keep in mind, there is so many years of obstacle course racing experience behind Sidney Paul Morris and David Mainprice that put together this race. That you're not just looking at a silly rig; you're thinking you're looking at a very well thought out rig with very specific holds purposely they, punishing yeah yeah purposely punishing they know i'm i'm sure they know it's doable i can almost guarantee sydney has got through this i think he gets through all of his own obstacles here comes first place male and he's picking up oh shit he's picking up something my bad my he's bad oh he's yeah. got to take a sandbag up the ramp and down this back side i guess you can toss it down the back side oh we've got to get a, a, a picture in picture shot here Yeah, look, okay, he just tossed the, the bag down. But it looks like they're going to have to take this. I don't know how much on. that bag weighs. He threw it pretty far. That's impressive. <laughs> That's, I, I tell you what. They can't weigh that much, man. He threw it far. Good on him. I don't know how far they're going to have to take this, but there's a few more obstacles here. I tell so. you what, here's Galia. Looks like she's making it. She's more than halfway. Come on, let's go, Galia. I know she has it in her. So let's trade the pips here. Matter of fact, Galia uh, got a podium for her age group in OCR World Championships. That's awesome. Yeah, recently, this year. What is that? This is a couple weeks ago. Is it about a month ago? So she's trying to rest yeah, as much she, as she can. She's but... chicken arming it and trying to rest her grip as much as possible. Man, you're this close to the end. You really want to make it. Uh, she, yeah, she's passed the first board, so she's got you know, the one more rock grip board. You see, it what's hard is that she's, look, she, the wheel's turning as she's trying to transition. <laughs> this is a, I hope someone gets a still shot. Of this. this is a great picture. This is a great picture. But so kind of like what you were saying is that some people might be like, oh, this is, this is too hard or this is that. But like, that doesn't tend to be the general sentiment in OCR. There is what... What's kind of beautiful about the obstacle racing community is that there's a the general um, kind of mental philosophy is don't wish it was easier, wish you were stronger. That's right. Right. Check out this obstacle. Oh, it's a hoist. So they're okay. putting the okay. bag on you. You carry that bag all the way to the hoist. You put it on there, and then you, you have to hook it on and take it off yourself. Now, this is one of their permanent race courses, except for they modified it. What normally happens there is you go up and you swing on that rope to that log that was right past there. So they modified that permanent obstacle. She's not off yet. No, she's not off yet. She's a perfectly trying to legitimate 
strategy. And the third place gentleman is still trying to work through as well. They're quite close, but you got to get past that last board. That's probably the toughest part. Jason Williams giving a big shout out to uh, Lisa Nondorf. He said Lisa Nondorf is going to make it through. You know what? I, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised. She's awesome. I absolutely love some Lisa Nondorf. She spends a lot of time doing ninja uh, competitions and. Uh, working out in Ninja Gems as well. So Jason Rich making his way through the woods. Nice long open running section here. But I believe at this point he's out of the water. Like he's through the water. So he's getting very yeah, he's close getting to close. the finish. Yeah. Well, we're 36 minutes in, right? That's right. How long are you going to hang up there upside down? Now that looks like... Is that, no, that's Miranda, isn't it? Can't tell if that's... That is Miranda going yeah. through for another try. Oh, shoe fell off. Shoe came off. I don't think there's anything in the rules about shoes uh, having to carry your shoe through the obstacle. Yeah, I mean, I guess once you, you get it back, uh, you can get it after you're done, then you're okay. David Mayprize, you want to come say something on the camera? No. He's oh, working. Let's, let's get he's, this. He's working. <laughs> Hang on. Let's get this shot here. <laughs> oh, okay. Hammer, hammer yeah. obstacle. Hammer, hammer obstacle. Made it through. So Tell you what, that's it. a heavy log. That's not. That's not terribly easy. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. They're stuck at the low rig. Everybody though. Uh, quite all the females. All the females yeah, yeah, are stuck there. One male's made it through. Good job, Jason. Good job. So Jason's knocking this thing and it's falling off. The rail. Good job. So this is inspired. That's inspired by Hammer Time and Conquer the Gauntlet, right, David? Actually, so uh, uh, yeah, but also from Frontline. Oh, from Frontline. Time. Okay, okay. Yeah, we were just talking about how you and Sydney have so many years of experience that there is a lot of thought put into all these holds, exactly how they're placed. You know, these are very well thought out rigs. Yeah. Well, you can imagine that would be easier if the whole thing didn't move. They're trying to rest on and trying to hang, but that was brilliant to make the entire thing swing. That was a race for the And Jason Rich is on another carry. This is the fourth carry so far. They've done. Oh, he a knows he has the lead. Look, he's he's walking it. He's got. He time. knows he has a lead. He's got time. He's walking it. Okay, there he comes. Oh, oh. got to get it up this slant wall. Yeah, Miranda, Miranda. it's getting close. Come on, Miranda. Oh, no. no. Oh, wow. You can hear everyone. I can hear everyone <laughs> cried out during that. I'm sure they caught that on the feed, but everyone really rooting each other on. So, yeah, there was a bucket carry. Then you had that half a center block carry. And then a wreck bag uh, or a force five bag carry. And now this is a second force five bag carry that he's taking it over some different obstacles. Here he's at a second twist on life. Looks like we've got some open waivers coming through now as well. Let's check out twist on life. There we got. I tell you what, some of the people know way this might be their first ever obstacle course. If you've never, if you've never trained grip, like most people on their first ever obstacle course, what well, it's gonna. Uh, all right, you're gonna realize that's a weakness today for sure. Why is? Because most people, it? when you think you know, hey, so you don't have any prior obstacle course racing experience, you're gonna, you're probably out in the gym just lifting weights. You Jason, know, you right? know some running involved. Kevin's gonna give us an update on what's happened here. Go ahead, Kevin. Okay. Yeah, so Jason's here doing it twice because the first time through he missed it, uh, going the other way. So, uh, you know, that goes to our integrity of our race and our athletes. Hey, I missed it. I make it up on the way back. So he's got two here and we're taking off. All right, so fill me in, Miles. What happened there? Whoa, look at that clean. Nice job. Wow. Okay, so basically what happened there was 
our first place uh, male here, he missed that obstacle somehow the first way through. <laughs> he caught it on his way back, decided that, hey, man, I'm going to, uh, I, I better do it. I'm going to have integrity. I better make sure I do that obstacle so no one can say, hey, I didn't do the obstacle. That is awesome. You know, obviously, racing in general, people just around. Um, either accidentally nice miss things shot. or they purposely, you know, no there are just jogging around, around, dropping it off. But in OCR, we definitely see a plenty of time. Coach, not even here. And he's in yeah, 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 yeah. That's super it. rare. That's super rare if someone ever tries to cheat on purpose. It's usually an honest to God mistake. Uh, man, I'm one of the worst about uh, getting lost off course sometimes. I've got lost off course uh, many times. I remember one time for Spartan Race in San Antonio, uh, the first time they were in San Antonio, mm. myself and uh, several other guys got lost and they, they tell us like this you way, know, this a couple way. miles from the finish. Yeah. And because we, we crossed uh, the, I the think finish it... line in like first, second, and third place and everyone was cheering us on. And that was the only one I was waving them saying, no, 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 no. We're not actually first, second, and third. Don't cheer for us. So we just got lost off course. All right, let's take a look at the females giving it another shot. Nice job, girl. Got it. And it looks like Doug nice is just making it to the, Ooh, the hammer. Yeah. Hammer carry. They're bringing that hammer over to the... Uh, that's the it. log smash or whatever you want to call that. Now, what's interesting is, say, remember I had asked uh, David Main Prize if this was Conquer the Gauntlet inspired. Remember uh, Hammer Time. The cool thing about Hammer Time is that it was lower on the ground, so you could actually stand above it and take the sledgehammer and bang it down for, like, use that momentum to drive it forward. We've got Jason Rich on Anchors. Anchors. Did that female make it through? Nice job. I can't tell. I, I was, started looking at I was busy. Yeah, I was busy watching Jason do anchors, which he had no problem with. Yep. But I tell so, you what, there's this all, if I'm playing devil's advocate, and I'm going to give both sides of the argument, one might be able to make the argument that, hey, it's the order in which you do those obstacles. Like if you would have done that obstacle first, your grip would be more taxed when you come up to these grip intensive obstacles as opposed to doing it later on. That's right. Yeah. And oh, we've got Jason Rich right behind us. Here we go. They're still at the rig, at the low rig. rig. Not so far. It looks like everyone's stuck at the low rig. There, there was one that looked like it. They might have made it through, but we didn't quite catch All it. All right, there he goes. It gets through. And this is stairway 2.0. The finish right here. Yep, he's right yeah. next to it. But now coming right off Valkyrie, he's going to have to lift up these, the sandbags that we were talking about earlier. And go back over. How many times does he have to go over there, Sydney? How many times has he got to go back and over? Over and over. So we've got to go all the way down and all the way back. And these bags are heavy, and they're uh, just. But how know, heavy was that bag? Probably about fifty pounds. I could, that could, I could be wrong. It could be heavy. That looks heavier than fifty pounds, man. How heavy is the I mean, bag? We were saying in there. Huh? Tell them that they don't know. Okay, yeah, he said between 100 and 120. Did you pick up one of the latest maybe, ones when you did maybe, it? Maybe I'm just that strong. I don't know. I mean, yeah, you could be. I can see it. I can see it. Okay. No, they are He's heavy. through. All right. All right. Now he just has the warp wall and then right to the finish. Got a little little turn around the run here and then yeah. the warp wall. I feel it. Good. Was Rich's last name? Or Paul. Jason Rich. Jason All the Rich. way up. Jason Rich. Rope is there if you need Jason it. Jason Rich you will definitely be your first place Pretty male wall. pro today here at Battle of the Lions, Dallas. As long as he has no issue with this wall, which he, he shouldn't. He's a pretty good uh, ninja guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a good ninja guy. He won't have a problem. Not to mention, there is a is a rope here, if I remember right, right? Yes, there is a little, yeah. not yeah. a three, and, four foot rope. Yeah, it's not a long rope. That's going to be more difficult for the shorter athletes. No problem. You, you can, can hear, hear them clapping, clapping in the background. Yep. You can, yeah, we can hear them clapping in the background to, with a short delay on the video feed, but uh, he is coming down. All right. Now, here's what's interesting. There's been a lot of hearsay about what's the fastest way down the net. So whether or not you flip over it or you roll down it, but notice that this net specifically is, the, the circle is wider uh, down. It's not 
the straps aren't so close together that you can roll down it. You pretty much have to either flip or walk down it on that back side. And there you go. There's your first place male. Way to go, Rich. Great job, yeah. man. Congratulations. As we can see from these other people on the course, this is not an easy course. There's Doug. Okay, let's put Doug on the main camera here. I'm missing if I switch it. Yep. Take Doug a case, really probably. I tell you what, Doug is moving great with that, with that sandbag, and he's running with it as he should. For any of you guys that might be wondering, when you train, you want to train for one of these races out here, the sandbag carry or a heavy carry at some point is a staple of OCR. There are some obstacles that are just staples, and a sandbag carry is always going to be one of them. All right. So always now make we go sure. Brewer, huh? Make sure you're implementing gotcha, those, uh, those runs, right? Say you just want to go for a run. Man, throw the sandbag way. somewhere there right. in your run, run yeah, it down to bed, and then get right yeah. back into the run. Uh, that along with monkey bars, right, low crawls, these are staples. Even this though side, every side. obstacle course race will differ from one to another, it, there are some that are just consistent we'll staples right. of, the ra of the sport, and that's definitely right. one of them. Let me show you on the other side. Yes, let's take a look at the, <laughs> the women. Yeah, um, yeah we're going to go back here and see the women. Still battling it out. Miranda's yep. There's the first open wave has got there too. Miranda's made it to the last board, but she hasn't gotten past that last board. Here we've got Doug making it to the uh, last couple of obstacles here. Did he just cut the course? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, he went over the, the tape right there for a split second. Just kidding. That was a joke. Okay, the anchors away. First time we saw anchors away is that savage race. Such a fun obstacle. When this first came out, tons of people lost their band at at uh, anchors go. away. But now it's been implemented in the post World Championships and other places so much that people are getting through it consecutively now. It's really not holding anyone back. It's a somewhat of an adaptation by everyone, right? Hey, check us we've, out. We've let's, evolved. Let's get a quick free shot, replay of such a fun obstacle. Doug when this going first through. came out, tons of people oh, lost their band <laughs> at, at uh, go. Anchors go. Away. I'm going to check that in a second. But. Okay, yeah, here comes up Doug to a a Stairway 2.0. I'll save this, and we can do some replays in just a bit. You know, Doug has a pretty nope. nice rig uh, made at his house. Yeah. He built one, and he practices. He has all these holds. So he practices with all these. Nice. They're all the Him same. Him and Lisa, uh, OCR, OCR power couple. They have all these. They have rigs and they have a giant climbing wall inside their house, and they they're just living the best life. And notice, yeah, he's gonna use that lock off. Notice as he locks off, he just has to reach over. He's not Looking pulling great, up. Come on. If you can't lock up, you pretty much have to pull up or use a kipping motion. Yep. There, there you go. All right, Doug. There you no go. Problem. He's through. Now he just has the. Carry over the Four ball. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Doug's using a different technique. He's gonna he's gonna bounce hold it on the bar, and hold it on top, and then move it back over so, so you don't have to pick it up from the, the ground to the bottom. I don't know what the rules are. That might be totally legal. That's smart because you don't. Yeah. Know. Yeah, that's super like smart. Two extra reps for sure. Everybody just dumps it. Yeah, he does. Dude, D David, dude, you see many people actually do that. I say fewer people think to do that, right? You got it, man. Most people just toss it over. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. AC, if you would, start your feed and start. Here we go. So they're coming up to the, he's going to come up to this last, uh, coming up to the warp wall. And then you have your second place male. Female still battling it out on the low rig. Yep, no problem. Easy breezy. You'll see everyone get an extra pep in their step. When you see that finish line right in front of you, That's right. give you an extra pep in your step. All right, yeah. And, yeah, second place overall pro male, but you know what? Also, uh, winner of the Masters category. You know what? And Doug is no stranger to winning the Masters category. Oh, 
Or it's right. uh, AC. Your camera is sideways. Good job, buddy. Hey, Good job. Sorry about throwing off the handbag. Good job. Good job. We got a lot. Women still battling it out on the... The second handbag, we had to go over the wall. Uh, he jumped across the handbags and ended up anchored away. It is absolutely killing me not to be able to ever go help them on this low rate, Jason. That's I had surgery yesterday, and I can't. I'm not supposed to be walking around or moving, and I definitely can't be doing obstacle course racing right now for this weekend, at least. So I talked earlier about how if I was trained up, I would be able to get through that, I believe. But I am going to go run the course after this, so we'll see. Oh, are you? If I feel like. Oh, okay, got... okay, that's cool. All right, put my money where my mouth is, right? I should stay and commentate on you. Yeah. Oh, here comes Jason. Was talking a lot of mess about how easy he breathes through. <laughs> I can I can totally get on this and keep the feed going, and I'll troll you. <laughs> that is, <laughs> Look at that food technique. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're definitely going to wait around. You know, we'll, we'll see our, our men come through. Or Actually, we're still waiting on third place mail, I believe, to get, to get through the rig. You know what I love about this, too, is I love this isn't just about the obstacle horse race. This is about not giving up. One of the most beautiful things about, maybe I sound cliche, and I've said this before. I understand. I probably sound cheesy and corny sometimes when I say this. But it's a matter of not giving up and trying again and trying again. What will happen is someone could be stuck here for an hour, two hours, and maybe they eventually get through it. That does happen. And that translates into obstacles in your life, man. And we all have obstacles and problems in life. When something happens in your life and you've got those obstacles and, and you have that mentality that I'm not gonna give up, I keep trying and trying and trying, you can't beat someone who doesn't give up. That's right. And so this change, this could change someone fundamentally. You know what I mean? And, and I do. It, it's kind of why I fell in love with endurance racing because I don't have to be the fastest guy. But if I can keep pushing and not give up, then I'm, I'm going to succeed. Yeah. Maybe I'm not going to win because there are people that can push faster and longer than me. But still, I can do more than I ever thought I could. I know for myself, I used to have, when I was younger, I had a more lazy mentality. I did not have, I did not think of the uh, stoic philosophy, the, the grit, uh, mental grit as being virtuous, something you would look to. I was like, oh, you know, why would I do that? That's silly. I'll just, you know, pay someone to do it or, you know, I'm not going to go sweat outside or something like that. And then doing obstacle course racing totally changed my mentality and then also affected my life and the people I brought around me when you start hanging around other people that have that same stoic philosophy and that work ethic and that mental grit, man, it changes how you see the world. Absolutely. And that's what you're seeing here. These women are not giving up. Let's take a look. Come on, TJ. TJ. We're going to watch TJ go through, and then we'll watch a couple of... Uh, oh. Trying to use his length to his advantage there. By He's got longer legs, obviously, trying to stretch over the next one. Let's look at some replays. Such a fun obstacle. When this first came out, tons of people lost their Here's band at, at uh, there, Anchors Away. Through. He just has to reach over. And then he's not pulling great, up. Away. If you can't lock up, you pretty much have to pull up. Or use a not clipping motion. Not crazy fast room, but yep. there you go. Efficient. Okay, Miranda is almost there. Yes! Wow. Yes! Yes! Vivian. Go, Miranda. In first for the women. Unless we missed it. Wait, and then Miranda got through second time. Was that only uh, Vivian that made it through right there? I thought it was I, Miranda finishing. Was she? If she did, I missed it. Oh, well, look, I think, I think she she, oh, first, but we'll, I know we'll when she does that with her hands, I think she's crying. <laughs> hey, no joke. I seriously think she's crying. I've seen her do it like this. It gets emotional. She's so happy right now. That's it. That's it. She is. Oh. It's down and through. She's now going here's to, yep, where you go here. down into the, uh, so I believe that's our cameraman, Robert. If you can go just follow that road, you can take it down and uh, follow it around. But you won't be able to stay with them in the, in the water. Unless one of our cameramen wants to go down into the water at this point, you know, you got to follow the time <laughs> the world, so Free country. Do what you like. You're I do need AC. AC. Go ahead and just 
turn off the, like, close the app altogether and restart the, the app. <laughs> yeah, AC's feet still coming up sideways. Yeah. <laughs> Theo said he doesn't want to go down to the water. He it's, gave us no. Nope. <laughs> All right. So we've got uh, first place female through. Well, and, and now this doesn't necessarily mean she is going to win. She still has That's other right. obstacles to go. She still has, I tell you what, Stairway 2.0. Now, I know she can make it through anchors away. No problem. Stairway 2.0 could be hard. I, we'll I see think she does. Her, her grip is super taxed right that's now. That's true. Hopefully, that's it true. recovers by the time she gets there. Oh, here we go. We finally got AC's camera back like straight. <laughs> so let's look for... There's Miranda on the side, so she hasn't made it through yet. So, yeah, Vivian is out in front. So there's a, cer there's a certain rock climbing technique where people will wrap their leg over their arm yeah, and um, vice versa figure, as they transition. Four. Figure four, yeah. And I, you're seeing quite a bit of that. Now we have uh, Kevin is, or our first camera, is at where they come out of the, uh, the creek. Kevin, if you if you don't mind, just follow that trail back, and we'll take a look, and, and you can get a shot down into the creek to see what they're going to go through. Oh, we do have um, some, an open open waiver already made it through. But well, he may have he may have skipped it because I saw that gentleman fall yeah, off it earlier. He may have got it through. Right, he may have skipped he it. If he's an open wave, it doesn't. And once again, guys, here are mandatory completion races. If you're oh, if you're going in the open wave. There's no penalty for attempting it, falling off, and going forward. That's what the open wave is for. It's not all about trying to get on the podium necessarily. Hey, it's, we all, we're also having fun, right? Just getting outside of your comfort zone, having a nice uh, romp through the, the forest here in yeah. North Texas. How about this? How about I go run back there with Kevin, and we can go, I can, like, we can work together to get down the... Clip. Okay, that sounds good. I'll stay here. Yeah, if you want to stay back, I got a warning though. As soon as you leave, I'm gonna talk about my feelings and emotions. No worries, man. <laughs> no, I'm not really. I'm not Kevin, gonna bore you, you guys. Stay back by that fence. I'll come meet you. Um, now, Miles, I'm gonna give you a. I, I say, hey, no, I say we put you on the spot, and we say Jason said he Don't could make rig. it through. Go do the rig. I need to be warmed up for that though, right? <laughs> That's true, that's true. I'm just, I'm just teasing. I'm no, just teasing. yeah. That was, I, I actually, I, I actually do, th no, I actually do think you can make it through. Um, yeah, so I want you, you can switch cameras here. Yep. One through okay. four. Okay. Actually, I can pass this around to you. No, it's okay. I can reach it. It's fine. Yeah, do it over there. It's fine. I'm going to rock the, you know, scoot over a little bit. Here, just yep, scoot yep. your chair. I'm going to scoot over a little bit. Ugh. All right. Now, also, all right, here comes nice. one of the open waivers. Oh, He's yeah. making it through just fine. He looks you know, really good, just one of the open waivers. Oh, no. I think I know that gentleman. I'm surprised he didn't run pro. Yeah, I thought he looked familiar, too, right? Yeah. That's some of the funny. It, here in Texas, um, there's, there's as Kevin's back by the uh, water. Um, oh, there he goes. Okay, yep. So check this out. Cameras, cameras one through four. Yep. And then pip select. You can turn the pip on and off. What is the pip? The picture and picture. Picture and picture, okay. And then to add, you know, change what camera they're showing. And then to go back, press that arrow. Okay. Pip select, arrow to go back, turn the pip on and off. I'll probably, let's turn off the pip. I'm probably going to stick with the same, with the, with the Just camera the one, view by one itself. Camera. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll right. leave it on that rig. We'll leave it on that rig for now. I'll wait till I see you there and get there with Kevin. Popping my mic off. I'm going to head back and go, go hang out, go play in the woods. Okay, cool deal. We'll see. Jason is going to try and catch up with Kevin. Go down in the ravine, maybe catch a Vivian. You see Galia taking another shot. He's going to make it through. I tell you what, if you are not allowed to use your feet on these obstacles, that would be no one would have got through, most likely. That would have been really, really difficult. But then you get stuck in this streak of But this one is... Remember, now those circular wheels right there, the whole thing moves. The wheel turns, but also the entire feature, as you can see her swinging there, moves. Now, the proper thing to do here is use that momentum to your advantage. When you're rocking back and forth, the strategy is the same as when you start on a rig. Once you grab the second hold, you don't want to let go of the first hold. You pull back on the first hold, 
So it pulls you back so you have this moment of swinging. And then you reach for whatever the next grip is at the apex of the forward swing. This is using the momentum and, and saving some of your energy. You can almost think of it as like a, a fiscal metaphor in which you want to spend as least energy possible to reach, to buy the outcome, right? To make it through that. Oh, no, her leg is stuck. Yeah, that's one of the, as we see there, that's one of the uh, unfortunate risks of that technique of putting your arm through. I know a lot of people love the chicken wing technique. Um, I've always been super scared of it. I'm so afraid someone's going to dislocate their shoulder and then going through it. But, you know. Yeah, yeah, we're good. Come on, Miranda. We're good. Hey, Viv yeah, Vivian made it through, guys. David. Vivian made it through. She's in the ravine. She, she made it through the low rig. We're so psyched. We're so psyched. No, she's been training a bunch. Yeah. Well, that's the beautiful thing. That's what I was telling everyone. The beautiful thing about OCR is the the mentality, the work, the grit, the mental grit of not giving up, man. That's what mandatory completion OCR is about, right? It's about learning a different way. Yeah, and learning. Yeah, exact finding. That's a beautiful way of wording it. David Main Prize just worded it. It's about finding a new way not just getting through it you're absolutely right everyone is watching the last person go through the rig and seeing new techniques like so here's an interesting one we got what i think is miranda she is straight up hugging the implement and this is this is other people will see that and be like oh wait i can rest my i can rest my grip right there i'm gonna do that and so together collectively as a group they will slowly work a strategy out and coming across it. Okay, well, I'm going to flip over to camera four here. I want you guys to see this run in the ring. This is what Jason Dupree was talking about. You can see this, how kind of sloppy, muddy that is. And then also trying to come up on the, up on that embankment. It gets pretty steep a little further down there and there's ropes. I'm going to go back. I want to see, I want to keep seeing Mar uh, excuse me, Miranda get to this little rig. Here comes the other gentleman. Nope. People's grip are so taxed at this point that uh, they're making it, they're making it, not making it as far, especially if you try to back the back times. Here comes Miranda. Let's go, Miranda. Ah, uh, bummer. 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 And so as it's also hard because you'll be fighting off demons. You really start getting inside your head at this point. Um, you're not going to give up, but you're gonna, you're, it, you can't help that fight off that feeling of, oh, man, I'm not going to. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do it. Maybe today's not my day. You know, and you start finding these mental demons. Hopefully they'll make it through here. You hear the sound of the, the child in the background. That's kind of the sound that these people are thinking on the rig. <laughs> That's it. You see, she almost made that hole. Keep in mind, those little rock holding grips, they're small. I remember the first time I saw the low rig at OCR World Championships when it was in King's Domain in Ohio. I want to say Medford, Ohio. And uh, man, many, many people were stuck there. That was really hard. We hadn't really seen a low rig up to that point. Oh, Lisa almost had it. Lisa almost had. Now, Lisa is overcoming an injury, too. She's good to go. Uh, but that's also in the back of her mind, too, fighting that. Fighting that injury. Here we go. Let's see. They're still in the ravine. I'm going to go back to camera four here. And you can see just how sloppy that terrain run is. And there we have, I want to say that's going to be Vivian. Vivian Tran, local North Texas favorite. You got it. You got it. You get to know everyone gets to know everyone in OCR in your region, whether you're in the northeastern, or the southern, or the west coast. Every, you get to see some of the same faces at these races, and you build up these wonderful friendships. And uh, once, like I was mentioning earlier, these are the kind of people you really love to have in your life because they, uh, they will build you up. They will build you up, and those are the kind of people you want to surround yourself with. Okay, there we go. Oh, 
Kevin Harkins. Appreciate him doing this for us today, working the camera, being a rabbit. See him? A little trouble with the gimbal there. Yep. He's having to get in and out of the the woods. One of the things you gotta be careful for too. One time, uh, many years ago, I saw a snake. I saw quite a venomous snake out here. That was I will never forget running through there. He slithered past me as I ran past him. I turned around and was like, oh my god, he didn't know. He's perfectly blended in. But you know, hey, we have those snakes are indigenous here in North Texas. Not crazy as much. Okay, here we go. We have camera two. Right here we got Vivian. Now, I'm not sure if this is Jason Dupree manning the camera now at this point. But keep in mind, Vivian knows everyone's stuck at that low rig. She's just going for a leisurely stroll at this point. She really doesn't have to run too fast. But she still looks like she's putting in the effort getting the run in. Ow. Here we go. Ow. And we can see, there you go. Women's still stuck at the low rig. But Vivian, moving good. It's a longer run. Let's go for the log. Some beautiful scenery. Look at that nice greenery, man. It's such a beautiful day to get out here in the nature and enjoy this wonderful weather. And it's at times like this out when you're by well, you're yourself as here. well. It's a little steep. You can tend to a hey, David Main Prize coming in the booth. I can't save you from it. Oh no way! So we get this. I'll get this. Third place mail is still out. Okay, we got a, We got yeah, another male coming in, but we know if he's completed everything. He's in the open well, he, wave. Yeah, open. yeah, he's just open wave, but uh, he's already coming through. Yeah, yeah, he looked. Yeah, he looked really good. Yeah, I thought I've seen him before. He's done the competitive wave. I forget that gentleman's name. Okay. But look, I was saying, it's times like this, hey, when you're running out there by yourself out in nature, and you're just kind of reflecting. It's a, you take a deep breath. And it's this wonderful feeling of uh, just kind of relaxation and meditation, man. These are the moments you really look forward to. Here we go. Here comes Vivian coming up the, the ramp. She's got to carry that sandbag, throw it over, and then continue on with it. I'm going to cut over to watching. camera three really quick where it looked like Sidney Paul Morris is showing him how to get through it. <laughs> this is the gentleman that put it together and he's, oh, we just missed it. He was showing him how to get through it. We're going to get, we're going to get through this. Okay, I'm going to go back Sorry. to camera one here. We'll keep watching Vivian. Look at Vivian moving good. No one's yep. behind her, Straight. but she's still running with a sandbag. That's just good training. Straight in there. That's you always practice the training, like I was talking about earlier. Common Take your time. There's no one behind you. Right? Keep your heart rate under Make control. Make sure you throw heavy carries into your runs and learn compromised running. That feeling, the feeling of either having your grip taxed and being able to run or running keep with that bag on your shoulders and, and drop your arms right swing your arms the shake them out those transitions are super important there you go good job there you go vivian's trying there to shake go. out her yeah. grip you want to rest your arms and, and forearms you've got other strength stuff coming up as she runs looks like miranda uber is back on the rig come on miranda I just like can't help it. <laughs> and of course, that there right next to her is Megan Beck. Came all the way down from Massachusetts. That's the OCR trainer. And she is, and it looks like she might be passing Miranda Uber on the low rig. Okay, look, she's almost there. Let's go. She played it smart. I saw Megan resting up. Hopefully this pays off for her. There you go. Tell you what, nice. your grip is so taxed; those holds are so hard at this point. Megan is going to try and skip the the cliffhanger holds the, all together. There we go. There we go. Through all fell off. Bummer. Okay, we're going to go back to camera one and see how Vivian's doing. She's making it through. Once again, this is one of the normal permanent features of the course. 
where you normally grab that rope and you swing over to a log. They've modified it a little bit to have a little uh, hoist. Yep. Put it Stand down and put it back up. up. No problem. She makes quick work of that. No problem. Okay. Personal Here it comes. All right, come back around. Now. Well, we got the third. We got third place. Uh, oh, I got her. Guy coming it's through. Right. He's open so, waiver. And then you'll put it back That's down. It. Still working through the yeah, still making keep through. Going. Left right, right here. And I tell you yep. what, that goes back to the your left. Someone is getting far along this rig. I'm gonna cut over to yeah. the rig. Yes. I've been here before. Lisa almost, almost making it through. Okay, let's cut back All the way again. again. How you feeling? She's picking up the pace. Just relax. She put She's down that sandbag. She's feeling right? good. They're still good stuck. transition. That's how you do it. Every time you have a heavy element, put it down, get right back. To the no, hey, that's great. I'm just telling smooth you. Smooth and smooth out. You've got arm stuff to go. I'm gonna run over to the right? Room. Okay. We have so just prepare. Make through. sure your arms are loose. Our, our producer, you don't want to be Jason Williams, is going to come There's through. There's not and much love. Words, words of positive encouragement. You've got some heavy ball okay. stuff what, what to pick up. Did I say William? Oh, you know what? I was looking at the Jason Williams of comments oh, yeah, right. comment, commenting. Jason Dupree, I do know you. <laughs> if, if you need to uh, take up stay to the right, stay to the right. Away. No, no, no. I'm good, man. I'm good. I went to the I went to use the little boys room before. Miles is high on whatever. Started, and by little boys, room, I mean <laughs> <laughs> calling people weird names. Okay, see you, bud. Okay, Jason Dupree is going out there to play on the low rig. Give some words of encouragement. All right, Vivian, grab the hammer, you'll fantastic. pick it up and run with it just a little Glad bit. Glad to see her push it, even though she knows no one's behind her. Hey, giving it, still giving it, pick it up uh, and come this a way. great effort. This way. Okay, she's going to have to do the, oh, forgive me, I forget the name of the obstacle. I call it hammer time. That's what Conquer the Gauntlet used to call it. So you're going to hit the log down bit. and then back. If it, it falls reminds off, me of, there's a just pick it up. Race, uh, which sucks if it falls off, so try not to let it fall off. To forgive my memory, Hit it square. But they run with a hammer and shield. On, or maybe in a, like an axe and shield. And you overcome it. It's like conquering yeah, this castle. There you go. I've seen it a couple times. I the name of it. She's using kind of a pendulum. A pendulum technique that, hey, that works. Nice, and back. That works. That's fine, man. It works good. Nice. Let it go farther. There you go. There you go. Oh. Okay. You're good. There we go. She got One more. <laughs> One more. Nice. Uh, hammer there goes you go. over here. Through. Ready? Nice Keep little dog, nice that little dog. dog with a hammer, man. It'll tax, it does tax your grip Good somewhat. Job. Her grip is already totally pumped out from that rig. She still has, and I don't want to say it too loud because I don't want to jinx her, but she has Stairway 2.0. How are you feeling? Um, okay. Tax grip. Grip. Now, I know you, you just Vivian trains at a, at a ninja gym, so she's been it's, on the yeah. Devil Stairs. So here you grab a bag. Which is basically Stairway. So she should be able to get through this. Looks like she's still over your shoulder. There you go. go now you're going to do a another clean over this bag. wall. So swing it between your legs and over. Try and clear that wall. The bag's got to go over the wall. There we go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. I got another Just camera like view of a everyone huge at the clean rig. Swing still over stuck your head. that low rig. Yeah, back. Good on Vivian. Back this is what it. I was talking about. This is when, okay. when you battle and you yeah. battle and battle. And you finally make it up over yeah. the... Uh, make it through the rig after being stuck there for a long time. Okay. Oh Put man. Put your back to it. It will. It just. It, yeah, and you're gonna it, do it that. It makes right? it feel so good. Okay. Keep in mind, hey, most of us, a lot of runners, I'm close. don't that weigh that much. So even these uh, sandbags. Yeah, you can put it and hey, try and it, climb. It can be a lot. It can be really hard. Oh, nice. Oh. Use more legs. Use more legs. I would say front rack Big that thrust. sandbag. Squat down, nice, blow it up, and throw it over. Yeah, now go over. There we go. <laughs> there we go. She's asking our cameraman. Oh, wait a second. What do I just go over now? Okay. Here it goes, Vivian. Yep, pick okay. it up. Looking good. 
Pretty good. There you go. Nice job. Jason Dupree. Okay, we're is going, going over to here to the another rig soon. The grip thing. You don't do anything with the bag, but set it down. And you're going to roll it all the way up once. Yep, there we go. Okay, so just like I was saying, her, keep in mind how grip, how her taxed her grip is already, like I was mentioning earlier. Man, this is hard. That's hard to do at that point. You can't just let it fall down. And then she still has a stairway 2.0. Once again, keep in mind, Complector, this is their grip intensive race for Battle of the Lions. Good job. This is One uh, at a time. not there a surprise to anyone. Nice job. It's got to go over the top. Bag goes over, then you. Yep. She. So no what worries. she's doing You're here, good. she You're has good. to crank that, that hoist, that rope Almost right there, there. is tied keep to a going. sandbag. And she has to crank it all the way up and control it down. There we go. Just like that. But keep in mind, once again, this is all grip intensive. All your grips are here, your forearms. Almost. Yeah, she's Come gonna, on. She's gonna make it. I tell you what. She looks like she's hurting about this point. You really Almost. don't want to go. More. One of the things there you, you can try to you're do there. is yep. hold it right here. You can try and up. hold it here. Okay. You're allowed to let it fall down. You don't have to slowly control up. it. One more wall. Also watching view. Oh man. You did a good People job on that other one, using feet. your legs, squat down and thrust. thrust People squat down, thrust, and rig. push forward. Again, she is going to have to. So this is a little taller. I wish I was out there yelling at her. You're going to want to yep, slow nice. it go. up. Go, go, exactly. go. Just like that. That's push good. it as you go up That's there. That's good enough. Yep, yep. Hopefully when she jumps up there, it doesn't fall down. There you go. It's not going anywhere. It's not there going you anywhere. go. She's making it safe. She's going to get over. Let's see the women attempting on the low rig here. Nope. Nope. Okay. This fell off. More attempts. See everyone trying to shake out their grip. Nice job. Nice job. Yep. Over your shoulders. Nice. Just a nice little trot. I almost walk it if you want to walk it. Bring your heart rate down. Go. More heavy carries on this course than there was last year at this grip intensive Battle of Lines Dallas race. I'm surprised to see more of the heavy carries. We got another man coming through from the open wave, coming up the warp wall. You can put the back, a little back, trouble back down where you were and just there. come right back this way. Okay, so we switch over. Everyone at the low rig is still waiting to let them right here to let their grip come back. Right here, Got another male right coming across there. the finish line. Keep your head up and watch. Feet. There we go. Let's go, Vivian. A little trouble with the reception coming through the woods. Apologize for that. Oh, okay. Peyton rules. Thank you for the heads you up. Keep going straight. You can right hear the rabbit. Away. You're good. This just blew over. You know what? No, I don't think it's supposed to be here in the rabbit. I got to figure out how to change that. Let me see how I can turn off the audio on the... You know what? I apologize. I don't know how to turn off his audio. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. You're good. There you go. There we go. Anchors away, like I said. Nice. No problem for Vivian Tran. She's going to work her way there you go. through that. No problem. Hit it. Nice. Good. There we go. She's coming up towards She's the end here back now. Back to the start there. Oh, wait. I think I see here. And then come so back this way. Be able to, let's see if I can turn down. Here we go. I should be able to turn down that audio. I think I figured that part out. To take away the volume from the rabbit as he's just kind of coaching her through. She's making her way through. Let's check back on the rig. Or actually, you know what? No, Vivian's coming up right behind me. Here we go. Valkyrie, not Valkyrie, excuse me, Stairway 2.0. Let's see how she goes. Here she comes. Let's go, Vivian. 
So, yep, she's trying to lock off. She's going to take advantage of that grip. She is doing it. Fantastic. She's got to make that little transition, make that quick transition. Now, I remember she did grit games this year, and they had these same holds, and she had trouble with these holds on that rig. But it looks like she's got redemption here. She's doing fantastic. She's almost there. She's almost there. Come on, Vivian. Yes. Yes. Yes, he does it, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be your first place pro female for Battle of the Lions, Dallas. Vivian Tran. She just got to get the. That's light enough sandbag for her. She's going to make quick work of this. She's going back and over. Object, you got to go over that bar, over the second bar, and then back. And then all she has left is the warp wall. And then there is your first place female. Also going to have an open wave gentleman right next to her with a heavier bag. Now, it was told to me by Sydney Paul Morris that that sandbag for the men is between 100 and 120. I don't know how much the one weighs for the women, but uh, Jason Dupree thought it was somewhere around 50 pounds. So here we come. And she comes up to the warped wall. There she goes. There she goes. All right, she's making it through. Yeah, let's go, Vivian. And she makes it. All right, here we go. Coming to the finish. Here she comes. Let's watch her cross the finish line after literally battling it out for a love for a while on that low rig she's got it oh happy day this is vivian trans first her very first first place at an obstacle horse race she's podium before but this is her first ever first place congratulations vivian tran she she crosses the finish line all right Fantastic. Here comes another gentleman from the open wave coming through. He left it all out there as well. All right. Fantastic. She feels like she wants to collapse. Look, she is tired as can be. Let's see who it, who's at the – let's go back over to the rig, see people trying to make it through the rig. Congratulations, Vivian Tran. This is Megan Beck from Massachusetts working her way through. Oh, let me change the view here. I got a camera. I'm looking around. There we go. There we go. Okay. Megan Beck. She's moving good about halfway through that low rig. We're waiting to see the rest of our female finishers. Well, welcome for join uh welcome to the feed you guys just now joining us. Battle of the Lines, Dallas. This is a a series is usually held in the South. I think the next race might be in Kansas City, but it's a mandatory completion race. And the theme, they have different themes for a different battle line courses. And this one is called Complector because it has to do with grip. Uh, let's see. Why is the rabbit guiding her through all the obstacles? Should they be impartial? No, absolutely. Oh, he, I wouldn't say he's, let's see. That be maybe. <laughs> I say that's not uh, that's not cheating. Given the rules of going through, not necessarily to, uh, cheating in any way. I think that's perfectly legal. to tell her the rules of how to get through the course. Okay, thank you for the update, Peyton. Too, let me know is muted. Didn't realize he left that audio on. All right. We'll see. Yeah, you were unmuted. We're hearing you. So I figured out how to mute it. Here we go, other gentlemen. There's more guys in the. <laughs> Get a quick shot of people in the open wave coming through with the heavy carries. Coming through. This is where some yeah. of the permanent obstacle court obstacles are on this course. Here we go. More people attempting the. Low rig, starting the low rig. This gentleman, now this gentleman was in first or second place. 
right? Oh, uh, with the gray shirt. Zane, Zane yeah. Zane was in first or second place and then got stuck here and has been here since. He's not giving up. So as well as TJ. Yeah. Just as one of the things with these races where time doesn't matter. You take off going as fast as you can. You get to the obstacle and you're like, you're pumped. You get, you fall. And somebody else walking comes through and gets, well, get through, right? Yeah. So speed absolutely. doesn't matter on these races. I yeah. learned that early on. Strength. Now, if you're at the start line, though, and you see guys that you know are really obstacle proficient, yeah, well. then then you know, you go, okay, you've got to be up with them to a certain extent. But guys that yeah. you know that may, hey, you can't out, you know you, you know can't outrun, you, yeah. you know, you're like, okay, I'm probably going to catch them at the, at the rig if I've never seen them before. I was kind of mentioning that earlier that many different people um, – around the country that. have their own groups like in the northeast no. a lot of those ocr athletes know each other here in the south a lot of us have seen each other at the races so we all get to know each other so you get to know people's strengths and weaknesses uh, as random guy you have no idea yeah guy did that with spartan at&t stadium my goal was to keep up with yancey if i could keep up with yancey because i know yancey's got obstacle proficiency obviously and the speed and the speed yeah and he's in my age group and i was like on him just keep up yeah. with him follow him watch him yeah yancey and cope of yancey camp fame yeah. halfway through and I, I, I find yeah, so. yeah. That's one of his strategies. I know he's real big on hey, breaking line of sight with the competition, yep. because then those Demoralize. yeah, it's demoralizing. Those mental demons start coming in. You got to start battling them. But here we go. Is that no, I believe this is uh, another young lady's oh. name. I I did not get a chance to get her name. Okay. See how she used the forward momentum from that yeah. swing to make a quick transition? Yep. That's how, that's the most efficient way. So hard right here. But now, see, there's, yeah, see, yeah. once you come to a dead hang right there, imagine your center of gravity. You know, it was swinging horizontally. This is the path you want to travel. As soon as you stop here, you can't get that momentum back unless yeah. you grab the previous hold. Yeah. Now it's a lot harder to move your center of gravity. A lot of these obstacles, you can kind of break down from a physics perspective. I want to say that is Galia oh, right now. Yeah, yeah, Galia. Galia is on one. it. Well, hey, all you got to get through, you just got to get through this obstacle now, you get podium Pretty for the females. Well. That's what it's coming down to. It's about not giving up. You're still looking for a third place guy, right? Still looking for a third place male. Yeah, so TJ and Zane are still there? Yep, they're still there. They're battling it out. TJ's grip is pumped out. But keep in mind, TJ doesn't play on the obstacles as much. He's more of a runner. Yeah, he's more, he's more of a runner. But uh, I know Vivian's been training at a ninja gym local by where they yeah. live at recently. So, yeah. you know, hopefully sometimes. he's going to get her. Um, well, she goes quite a bit, but she's got to get him to go. And he'll get that training in. I know he, he goes there sometime with her. But what's interesting, too, is that these, these thicker T-holds, these aren't really, that's not a ninja implement. I've never been to a ninja gym that actually had that hold. That seems to be strictly uh, OCR. You need those fat grips when you're using your weights, big old fat grips to help with your uh, grip strength on that. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. And also practicing lock-offs. You know, when people first get an OCR and they're practicing grip, a lot of people just practice dead hangs. But an important uh, thing to practice is learning to lock off. You know. Yeah, do the dead hangs. That's great. Do the hand swaps. But also practice locking off. Yeah. I don't have no grip left in my hand. I'm trying to... TJ swing around. Yep. TJ has been really smart about trying to use his legs to his advantage and his length. Like, usually on a low rig, the taller you are, the harder it's going to, the harder it's going to be. But he is trying to reach that out. And you can hear him just kind of... Talking it through. I gotta make sure the volume is off on that. Or let me turn this volume down that so you can hear me. Matter of fact, I think the volume. There we go. Okay, I think I the volume is up on that rabbit as well. You got that turned down. Let me know in the comments. Everything sounds good. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Make sure you like and subscribe. Follow us. We've got many other race coverage coming.
but hopefully better grammar than the sentence I just made. Pretty sure that's incorrect. <laughs> but no, we have many more. Uh, we have a lot of great coverage. Many more races coming up. Here, we got Miranda coming back on the rig right here. Let's see how she is making out. Let's see if she can get through. Let's see. Here we go. Yep. Okay. Oh, she's almost through. Come on. Come on, Miranda. Come on. Come on, Miranda. Okay. She's going to rest her. She's going to rest her grip there. She's going to try and take a second. She's so close. Oh man, it's it's it just kills you the suspense and the tension when you know they're so close to the end. They almost got through the rig, and she's been battling this rig all day long. We got more open waivers coming through the finish line now. Oh, she fell off. She fell off when I looked away. Okay, bummer. Ah, oh, bummer. Okay. Here we go. Take a look at this. Take a look at someone coming up over the warp wall now. There's some more of the open wa waivers. Almost there. Almost there. Yes. Such a cool obstacle. Who doesn't love a great warp wall? It's so entertaining. It never gets old watching people conquer it. Uh, getting down sometimes is scarier than going up. Uh, comes a young man from the open wave coming over. Miles, I'm back. Um, okay, let me let me move back over for you. Stay right here. Well, I hey, we also had the audio going on for the uh, all the rabbits, so I turned them all down. They should all be down now. Yeah. No, they're not all on. Well, I just turned them down. They were all up. You want them? They're up a little bit. So oh, they're, they're okay. not on unless the lights lit up. So well, they were there. just talking. I was trying to turn the audio oh, off you. from the rabbits, man. So, yeah, you can turn it down some, but don't don't have to. I don't know. Okay. I got that. You can play with it. As there we go. Know. We're going to go back over. Let's switch over to camera three. Now we got back. There's Lisa Nondorf and Megan back. They're all going to. They're going to keep battling now. We'll stay with them as long as, uh, I'm gonna... as, long as Mr. Dupree wants yeah. here. I'm not going anywhere. You're good. There's the lovely April Dupree, Jason's wife. How you doing? Good to see you. Feel good. If you're good sitting here, I'm gonna go run with Declan. And okay. we'll come back and then Oh yeah, kids race. Absolutely. About, yeah, about, go have fun with your son. About two hours into the race is probably where we'll cut it if nobody's making the move. Okay. Well All it's right, up so to you. Thirty minutes. Yeah. I'm hanging out. We'll watch and we'll keep commentating. Right. Uh Mr. Dupree here yeah, is gonna go run form. through the kids wave. Absolutely. Matt B. Davis. <laughs> he chased it at and B at Mavis. That's yeah. pretty good. Why is a rabbit guiding her through all the obstacles? Because they are uh, stuck there and they're just having fun. Because not all races are serious. I think it the harder to well, they still want to be competitive. They can get through. I don't think there's anything against the rules uh, about that. You could, yeah, you could talk. You could talk to people. It's just kind of telling the rules. But it'll be it'll be cool to see uh, kids race fixing to go off. Here's people coaching each other through. This is another part of the OCR scene I was talking about earlier where you have everyone kind of strategizing and trying to work it through bit at a time. Here, let me switch the camera here. I don't think my lovely wife and TJ know they're in the picture right there. Here we go. Unfortunately, it's not raining. The holds aren't wet. You know, imagine how much more difficult this would be if the holds were wet and slippery and muddy. Because I can tell you what, that's happened to many times here, as Jason was mentioning earlier. Usually here at this venue, you know, as with obstacle course racing, how often does it rain the night before? Things get muddy, sloppy, and then uh, a simple obstacle that would not present as much of a grip challenge all of a sudden becomes exponentially more difficult. So it'd be cool to see here. I got to tease my wife later on. I thought she's supposed to be going through the race. I never saw her come across the finish line. Pretty sure she's walked off the course after this. 
I don't think she made it through the rig either. Oh, here comes a young man in the open wave. They're trying to, two young men are trying to conquer the warp wall. Wish she had some better. Here's a little, here's a little video of the festival area. While everyone's waiting to attempt the low rig. Give you a little footage of what it looks like around here in the festival area. There's David Main Prize. That's one of the owners. So I see the back, you have the back side of the warp wall there. You can see me there underneath the blue, the blue tech. <laughs> you got all the letting all the kids try the. They're doing another round of the kids wave, letting the kids try the warp wall. Oh, that's a lot of fun. I'm telling you, David Main Prize does a fantastic kids race. Um, he really loves the kids. And he puts on a great obstacles and a great venue for them. Yes. Yep. I watch them psych up the kids. I'm gonna give him some. Let's give him some audio. Very fast, but they did skip the rope line. He tried to. I want you to make sure that they do the rope line. No, 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 no. That's not fair. That's not fair. We're on the rope line. Right there, you got our own. No. We got our own Jason Dupree with his son. Five and of course, his wife is off the camera there. She's Let's gonna be go. taking okay, pictures. Okay, my rules. I've got some new guys, so we have simple rules. Number one, what's the number one? You remember, that's the only sense. This is the show Optical Force Racing is a community, is a, is a family sport. Bring your kids out. Bring them to the races. You don't gotta leave them at home. Bring them so they can run the kids' race. It's a really safe venue out here, a real nice area of North Fort Worth. You gonna run? Alright. Are you ready? And they're off, the kids. Look at that. Love to see the look in the kids' face, the big smiles on their face. Look at them all out. These kids are moving fast. Gotta go under, gotta go under. All right. All right, get up, get up the bow. Come on. Climb it. No, you got to climb the rope. You got to hit it with your hand. Come on. Oh, no, no. They, that's okay. It's not It's not a competitive way. Climb the rope. They can attempt it. They can yeah, use those knots. Stand up. So I keep swatting away. You guys can't see. I got little flies flying. There you go. Around. Yeah, climb up. Use the knots. Probably looks funny in the... Uh... All right, let's go. Okay, I'm going to turn down the audio for the, for the, the rabbit there. There you go. Look, look at these young these young kids, man. They're doing fantastic. They're running. Look how fast they get the transitions from obstacle to the next. Okay, I'm gonna show one gentleman is making his way through the low rig. He's getting pretty far. I'm gonna cut over to him. This is one of the men in the pro wave. I believe this is Zane. Look at him, he's about almost three, yeah, he's about three quarters through the low rig. Oh, no, 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 there you go. Okay, good core control. I can't believe you can do that and not touch the ground. Wow. <laughs> he's just trying to regain his strength. He does not want to give up this far along. He's been here for a while. And this is the furthest I've seen him make it on this rig. Yeah, see, the problem is when you're, you don't hook your legs in there, you, yeah, your grip is just waning at that point. Okay, bummer. So close. So close. Let's check over on the, look at this young man 
running. He's moving good. And they're coming around about this little stretch, quarter mile stretch of running. And into the woods they go. There's usually a big hill after this. One of them going to implement that big hill. Now, what you can't tell, too, here at this venue, the DFW Adventure Park in Roanoke, Texas, there is zip lining that goes on overhead. It's obviously not happening today because of the race going on. That's normally uh, what happens on top of the permanent obstacle course. And it's cool when you're running through to hear people screaming and yelling and having fun. Here we go, right at the finish line. Oh, it's a mini warped wall. <laughs> That's great. Come on, young man. After he gets over the top here, we'll switch back over to the low rig, see if anyone's making progress. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Future generation of OCR, everyone. All right, let's watch over here. It looks like we have, yep, I didn't get that young lady's name. Miranda's still checking it out, her and Vivian. Vivian went back and they're strategizing with Miranda. It looks like Megan Beck's looking at her hands like her hands are starting to tear. That's a good point. I hadn't mentioned up to this point that not only are they battling trying to get through this low rig over and over, their hands are probably starting to tear at this point. Look, it's warm out here. Anytime you have heat and friction, um, it really tends to tear your hands. At least these holds, well, I was going to say at least these holds are metal, but I believe some of them are indeed metal. And you have that metal and the heat and the friction, you're just going to tear your hands. Um, let's check the comments. Welcome for joining us, by the way, if you guys are just now joining us. This is Battle of the Lions, Dallas, the Complector. Their grip intensive, mandatory completion obstacle course race here in North Texas. So Miranda Uber is doing what engineers do, and she's trying to break it down piece by piece and come up with a strategy in her head of how she's going to transition through. She's very logical, very technical, and I feel confident she's going to eventually make it through. The more, many more times you try, man, hands start tearing. Once your hands tear, it can get really, really difficult because then you're fighting just through the pain on every attempt, and you may not even make it through. Because your hands, uh, once your hands tear on those grips, it just stings. It's uh, it's more mentally demoralizing. Let's see here. More people from the open wave coming through the warped wall. And all the kids have came back after the kids race. They're all trying the warped wall, the adult warped wall. That's awesome watching them. That's awesome watching these kids attempt the warped wall. We don't have video of it right now. There we go. You're good. There we go. There, she's trying her best to stay up high as possible on the holds. I tell you what, that young lady has incredible adductor muscles. You know how hard that is to hold that hold with your thighs. Your adductors have to be incredibly strong. The hold a nunchuck with your thighs. Come on, she's almost there. Don't give up. Oh, I'd love to see it. Is there someone else make it through? She's almost there. Okay, she's going to chicken arm it. There's another cool viewpoint of it. 
I'll give you another viewpoint of it right here. Look at this. A little closer. You see what she's trying to do? Oh, she's right there. She's right there. Let's go. Come on. You are almost there, young lady. Come on, Lisa. Oh, that's Lisa. I apologize. That's Lisa Nondor. Yes, she did it. Yes. We got another female through the ring. Lisa Nondor. No stranger to the Masters podium herself. Oh, Lisa is a fan. Oh, man. She's also a gymnastics coach. And she's also, I believe, a psychiatrist. She's, she's, a, she's such a cool, uh, fascinating person outside of inside OCR. And there is she did it. I told you this is what it's all about, working at it, working at it, working at it. You eventually get through it. She didn't give up. She got through it. Fantastic. We'll try and keep up with her where we can. Her, there, there it goes. Oh, this is beautiful. I want to see this. She is headed to our look. She's going to get back in the running. There's her boyfriend, Doug Snyder. Came over to hug her. I know she's got to be ecstatic. Way to go. Okay, let's see if that pushes the next women through. Miranda Uber taking another attempt. Tell you what, sometimes that can do, that can give you a mental boost. When you see someone else make it through that's been sitting there battling with you for a long time, for over an hour, and then they make it through, you're like, I can do it too. And it just gives you somewhat of a mental boost. That mental boost can make a big difference. Nope, she, she grabbed it wrong. Megan's hands are torn. She's not giving up. She's battling through it. All right. Make sure to like and subscribe, guys. We've got lots more coverage of other races coming up. The race season is not done this year. So stay tuned. Keep on us through. Like and comment. And if you're sitting, if you're sitting there at home, you're sitting there looking at your, your phone, watching this on YouTube, and you're like, I can do that. Well, come on down. Come on down. Come give it a try. The OCR community is really welcome. I'm hoping there's going to be people that are going to watch this that maybe never done an obstacle course race before and say, oh, man, you know, that looks really fun. And you know what? I think I can do that and want to come give it a try. Come on down, man. Give it a try. As you can see, look, competitors are rooting each other on. We're a, we're a, we're a tight-knit group. We're the whole OCR community and the whole world, everyone helps each other. What's, what I always think is one of the most beautiful things about OCR is that when you go through the open waves, and you'll see people of all shapes, sizes, and colors helping each other through, up and over through the obstacles. It's so wonderful. You know, all you ever hear on the media is the, you hear negative news, right? You always hear sad news, people hurting each other, people stealing from each other. But then to come out to obstacle course racing and see people genuinely helping total strangers, it's beautiful. It's absolutely wonderful and it's inspiring. We got Miranda Uber taking another attempt on the, on the rig. Here she comes. I know she can make. I know she can make it through this. Miranda Uber actually has a really cool obstacle course built in her backyard. If you go through her feed, she has one interesting video recently where she was on. She had, she had a, a giant wire tied between two trees that she has holds on. She was transitioning like a rig, and the whole tree came down. And her husband managed to get it on video. Here she comes. We're looking good. Lisa Nondorf got through, guys. Oh, fantastic. Lisa Nondorf got through. She's on her way. She'll most likely be our second place female. Miranda, taking it. Here's a smart. Oh, here's a smart strategy. She's got up on top there. Look, oh, she's yeah. going to rest on top of so, the wheel. She's actually sitting inside of it. And she is going to hug it. We've all seen that at Oxford Course Racing World Championships and Battle Frog when it was around. Oh, yeah. Remember at the rig. Man, anything you could do to rest your grip at that middle part if your, your grip was totally taxed out. Not to mention, hey, we don't know how torn the hands are. 
So you, Are you said, ready to sit back Lisa, down? You want to sit? Lisa got through. Lisa got through. It's, She's gonna be our second place female. I know she get ready. Follow. It looks like Robert's waiting for her. Uh, I switched over. I haven't seen her. Well, I, I take it Robert's waiting. Okay, right let's we'll we'll swap over and see if she's over there. Let's go take a look. So while while we're waiting, I really want to see if Miranda makes it through. She hasn't tried this strategy yet, where she's rested her grip in the middle. Rest. Yeah, it's a long rest, but keep in mind, she this she's taken numerous attempts over an hour. Yeah. Grip totally pumped out. We don't know how torn her hands are. But uh, you know, hey, she'll be darned before she gives up. She's gonna, uh, she's gonna take a shot at it. We have Galia passing her on the rig now, super close to the end. I tell you what, if Miranda sees Galia get through, the next woman to get through is gonna get that third place on the podium. And for some of these athletes, if they don't get, if they know podium is out of uh, contention, they might just, they must say, give up their band and be like, hey, I'll focus on next weekend's race is here in Texas. We actually have back to back races for this whole month. Uh, last weekend was Savage Race Dallas. This is obviously Battle of Lines Dallas. Next weekend on Saturday is Savage Race Central Texas, which we say Central Texas. I think it's more South Texas. It's in Cat Springs, Texas. And then the ver and then not mentioned it's also the same day as the Ultra and the Spartan Beast Dallas, which is actually technically Granberry. And then, uh, of course, we also have, if you, if you want to do Savage Race and then come and do the Spartan Sprint in Granbury, you can do that on Sunday. So we have lots of races going on every single weekend this month. And we have <laughs> both ladies resting on it. See, this is where it's so interesting. Just as a society, we always watch others and we learn from when people try something new, learn from it and maybe either use it or then change that up a little bit and that's even more effective and then we progress and we progress and we progress and everything. So they're both taking a good rest. They're taking a union break on the wheel. <laughs> I don't blame them. I do the same thing. They're not giving up. That's the beautiful part. Um, it is. A pro, a pro, a pro, I know Marjorie and I brought two chairs. It's whatever. You guys sit in it, whatever you want. Ladies first. They're shaking out their grip there. So we will see who can make it through. They both rested for quite a bit. Oh, they're deciding to proceed together. <laughs> they know they know they both rested quite a bit. They only have half the rig to go. They can most likely get through it maybe by now. Hopefully their grip is back out. And you know what would be really entertaining is if both ladies got through and we have a race for the podium for third place. Oh, bummer. That's not going to happen. Galia fell off. Miranda still transitioning. Nope, she's going to come off too. Bummer. Oh, man. That is, that is a bummer. That is a bummer. I really thought they were going to make it through. Galia and uh, right Miranda, they're right there together. They started transitioning back through and came down. We touch the ground. So we will wait for that second place female. Is it Lisa? You said. Yes, second place is going to be Lisa Nondorf. We'll wait for her. And to come Doug Snyder finish. is running alongside her. We should have gave him a camera. <laughs> um, if I would go out, but Robert's got my camera. Did you go take an attempt at the rig? You no, say, I didn't. You say, okay. But we'll wait for. Yeah, I'll go run out with yours if you want. Yo, if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. Go Either whatever, whichever one you want. Go Which one you want? Waiting for more people to take attempts. We got to see the. So we get to see the kids are allowed to play. Try the adult warp wall. They made quick work of the kids one, so they're over here off the side of the camera. Okay, here we go. Almost. Almost. Struggling with that, that rock grip. Yeah, those rock grips are small, and and they're hard in themselves. And then when your grip is taxed, tell you what, I think a good strategy would be to totally surpass that. That's a stink bug. I'd be careful. That's a stink bug. We got, we're getting invaded. Stink bug has got onto the equipment. 
And trust me, if someone grows up in the South, you don't want to scare the stink bug too bad. You try to. Cut the room away. We, we almost had. There goes Megan Beck taking another attempt. So second place females through the rig and almost had third place. Had two females side by side on the last, uh, like sitting on the last, the, uh, wheel. the last wheel. We got the other owner of Battle of the Lions, uh, David Main Prize, and then there's Sydney Paul Morris. He's right here on the other side of the camera. Sydney, you want to come over here and tell us a little bit how you designed the low rig, man? Come on. Let's see. Let's see. Let's hear it from the uh, the mad scientist himself. I was telling earlier. We're talking with David Main Prize and saying, "Hey, there's so much OCR experience uh, between you and David in OCR." And so when you look at these rigs and all these obstacles, they're very well put together. It's very purposeful. You, they're well thought about exactly. You're putting things in a specific order for a specific reason. And uh, you, you know, you have so much more experience. It's not just battle of lions. You and David go around and you help out abominable snow race, front line, many of the other OCR races you guys help put together. Yep. And you're the mastermind behind a lot of these rigs. So can you kind of tell us more about, you know, how you put together uh, a certain rig? Is there any specific mentality? Was this, uh, what was your thought process going into it for the complector here in Dallas? Um, well, I, I, this, this course that we actually had designed uh, about five or six other obstacles that was supposed to be here too. But uh, between worlds and a bunch of other stuff, we got got fit behind. You know, we got our, all kind of cool hex grips and all kinds of things coming from race ready obstacles. Oh, okay. Um, but I was like, man, since we didn't get all these cool things, we need to make this memorable. You know, we need people to strive. So, like three o'clock in the morning last night, we had some leftover stuff. And I was like, we really need to make a harder rig. So, oh, so you changed this last minute. This was not the normal low rig that was there before, and you changed it up last minute. I added last this night? low rig at three o'clock this morning. No way. Oh wow. Okay, I just dropped my dropped my ear some phone. That's not the mic. That's amazing. So you threw it. Well, it ended up being the defining factor mm -hmm. for the rig. Now, as a, as a race course designer. How does that hit you? That's what you want, right? You want that. I want, I want the women and men to, to sit there and push and be there, stuck there for 20, 30 minutes trying their hardest and not give up. Yeah. I, I love that the, the not giving up and sitting there getting it. You know, obviously, it's got to be somewhat-ish doable. It can't be, a, you know, not yeah, yeah, existing yeah. to get through. Yeah, yeah, you want people to be able to get through, to have that opportunity, but, to have a chance, a, a, a probable yeah. chance of making it but, through, right? But, you know, I want, them to, I want them to push. I want them to fail a few times. I want them to sit there for 30 minutes. You know? That's where you grow, yeah. right? That's what we were talking That's about. What we all that that feeling of when you make it through, just like you saw Lisa Nondorf. When you saw Lisa Nondorf and Vivian Tran, now I didn't have the, the good view of their face, but, but sure I can swear they were flying. Like here, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was tears of joy. Man, I love to see that in people's eyes. Mm -hmm. Just like hey, when you're training people through uh, obstacle course racing. My, you my very see. first event I ever put on, they had a bunch of women and a bunch of guys, too, that had that did that. And that's what made me just so fell in love with putting on an event. Yeah, yeah. I remember, it's all reminiscent of uh, the first time I experienced that was Battle Frog. Yeah. Was that about the same for you? When I remember people getting stuck on the yep. platinum rig. Yeah. Yeah, it's wonderful, man. Well, I appreciate you stopping in no to problem, come man. take us. Thank you so much. I appreciate you, and I love the races you put on, man, Thank you. and what you do for the OCR community. You and David are appreciate it. Are necessary for OCR, man. Did, People see you at OCR World Championships. Did get past it yet? Uh, no, Lisa and Vivian Tran. Yeah, yeah. No other men have made it through is Doug and Rich yeah. have made it through. So we'll cool. see. Uh, See what happens. Yeah, we'll see it through Betty Wilson. Zane, that's Zane right there on the low rig. Yeah. He's been sitting there battling it out from the beginning. He was in first or second place. And he's been yeah, battling no, he it was out. cruising. Now, if you were over there. Did you see? <laughs> there's my wife with the sandbag there. Kind of want to catch her running. Proud of her running with that sandbag. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. That's how we train, right? Yep. We were saying how that's one of the staples in OCR. There's always a heavy carry. Now, tell me about this. I noticed that there's more heavy carries. At this at this battle yep. lines this year than there was last year. The Is it, was there a specific? Year? Yeah, it was a different course. It seemed like there was less heavy carries. Was there any particular reason why you did that? No, um, uh, we just had them, and we was like, man, how can we add some more things to this course? One. You know? Yeah, yeah, the same. Yeah, and it's just a, it's a, you could always throw it yeah, in any OCR race, right? right? It's always a staple. There's always yeah. a heavy carry. Especially with the That's carries, you know, you have to do some walls. Same thing, pick, up pick stuff. it up, go up, drop it yeah. down. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, man. We appreciate no you. Keep up the great work, brother. What ladies are there now?
Uh, so the ladies, uh, all the other ladies are still there. Galia, that's Galia. Uh, that's Galia. Now, and this is the open wave we yeah, have yeah. on the screen right now. That's my lovely wife. Wait, there's uh, a gentleman right there. We switching over to him. Followed by Doug. Oh, yeah, yeah. Followed by Doug. Okay. We can see they're making through. They came up out of the ravine. Man, that's a fun, fun run. There's a fun little run. And like you were mentioning earlier, hey, man, we all know there's always some thorn bushes. This, yeah. It's a little thorn. You're going to cut up. Yeah. Up. Yeah, you're still torn. You guys can't see uh, Sidney Paul Morse's uh, hands and legs right now, but he's got tons of little tiny cuts. There's a, for this particular terrain in this course out here, it's always good to wear the long uh, yeah, the mud long. gear socks, man, yeah. the long socks. So. All right, let's go. Here. Okay, thank you. But we have – I'm trying to get this mic. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to get this mic stuck oh, in my ear. Good. Lisa Nondorf making her way. Trying to navigate all the little branches here and there. That's a nasty one. So it's not one you can just breeze, uh, you want some breeze run through hard. You want some? Calling me. Even our rabbit's starting to get stuck a little behind. See you what? Someone is else. We'll switch back over to the rig here in a little while. I want you guys... You'll get a good idea of the train out here as well, not just the obstacles. So that right there, again, is one of the permanent obstacles. There's the second. But not with the sandbag. Guys. Yeah, not with the sandbag. They, what they've done is, what the battle of the line guys have done is they've, um, they've kind of changed uh, the permanent obstacles. Up a little. Here, let me move over some. You're back now. Let me move over some. So what we don't have is uh, times for everybody because I don't believe it was a chip time race. But we do know who's won for the men, uh, uh, top two. Well, yeah, and there just wasn't as many uh, pro athletes today as there is open waivers. So there was no need to – there wouldn't even be any need to do a timing chip as we could just tell who's coming through. Right? Mm -hmm. So it was Jason Rich and, and then Doug Snyder, right? Yep. Doug Snyder in second place. Still waiting on a third place male. But I tell you what, so that's Zane. Zane is, uh, him and TJ are still there at the rig. They're the last two men waiting to get through the, the rig. So if either of them get it, it's podium. And Lisa, she's got left the, this carry through these obstacles. She's going to be carrying this bag up until she gets to the hoist, hooks it on, does the hoist there. And then she's got one last little run through the woods with the hammer, hammer obstacle. Yep, hammer obstacle. Still, ha hey, still has anchors away. and um, Anchors and stairway 2.0. Stairway 2.0, yeah. Uh, a whole bunch of people came back and they're, everyone's hanging out at the low rig, helping each other. You can see where they have some of the implements on the permanent course set up for paintball as well. After all, this is also mainly actually a paintball park. It's DFW Adventure Park. Not only has the obstacle course and the the, um, the zip lining and all, they have team building exercise out here. It's mostly, and they have ski shooting and a bunch of other stuff too, but it's mostly actually a paintball park. They have huge areas for paintball. Which fun fact? I've never done a paintball. I never done paint. I'm not, I've never not done a paintball. I never do paintball. I've never done. A, I've never uh, played paintball. I gotta give it a try one of these times. Marjorie's been wanting to do it. Uh, maybe we can get the. This would be a great place to do it because they really do have some fun areas. They got some that are more like ski paintball, but then they've got other ones where you've got forts built up and buildings to go into. What's speed paintball? It's usually a smaller course, uh, and you've got a lot of implements, like little block, yeah. blocking oh, okay. things yeah. around. But it's not a big, giant open area. Um, so right off the bat, paintballs are flying. So it's not like you're running across a field or through the woods. But back here where we are, you can actually see through the woods some of those buildings that they yeah. play in. Yeah. And there's even, like, old cars and old uh, airplane. I saw an old airplane body out there, too. Oh, that's pretty cool. Now, you know what I'm really excited for for Lisa? 
Lisa was talking to us before the feed, and she said last week at Savage Race, last race, that was one of her worst races of the year. Oh, really? She said of her entire career. She was really bummed out about it, man. Mm. So I'm so excited to see her go from having, and I was telling her, hey, look, obviously not every race is going to be your best race. That's just inherently part of the, the, the game, right? At no point did you ever think, every race I ever do is going to be awesome. Yeah. Everyone is going to have it. So, and, and, but here she is having one of her best, uh, races ever, man. She's going to podium. Yeah. She's going to podium. I'm so happy for her. Yeah. This is fantastic to see her push through and just like all the other women, they were sitting there pushing and fighting and she made it and uh, it's going to pay off. And once again, if you guys are just now joining us, I'm Miles Keller. This is Jason Dupree. The OCR report, and this is Battle of the Lions Dallas, the Complector. This is their grip intensive. It's a mandatory completion obstacle course race. We're enjoying the coverage and the commentary. Make sure to like and subscribe. Comment if you want to say anything. We'll address it. I do my best to try to get to the comments. Yeah, and we're we're out here. It is a nice day. It is getting warm at this point. Lisa's got her arms raised. She's obviously cramping. For those of you who may not be runners. Here's her cramping. A lot of people go like this and raise this up, and it really helps deal with the cramps. Or the, I shouldn't say cramp so much the side stitch. Yeah. That's TJ giving the rig another try. Not yet. So, yeah, this obstacle, they have to take that big sledgehammer, take it with them for a ways before they do the log hammer. Somebody on the stairway not wanting to be watched. Ah, uh, there goes my wife. She's running good. You can see her in one of the other views. Oh, she is. Doing fantastic. Yep. Oh, Lisa, you missed. <laughs> and she strikes. She swings and strikes it. <laughs> Strike one. Do you know? Did you see if if Marjorie made it through the rig? No. At some point, she left the rig came over here, video Vivian, oh. <laughs> and then went back. So I don't I don't think she made it through, but I know she was kind of beating herself up because normally she does it competitively. But she's like, look, Miles, I haven't been training. I'm just going to go do this for fun. She has such a beautiful uh, view of OCR, work-life uh, work life play balance to her. You know, I, I, I had a, a different mentality. I had a more stringent mentality of training consistently every single day very regimented, you know, I write, I write programming for athletes, and uh, Marjorie really helped me find a nicer balance, man, between, nice. hey, it's not, family's more important, sometimes, hey, sometimes life gets in the way, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it, getting on a podium does not define you as a person. I would define someone as their character, what they're doing when they're not on the podium, right? Someone can be a great athlete and just a not great person, that's but right. the people that we love and remember are really the people with good hearts, good personalities. Matter of fact, I'd even argue a lot of times we like to see someone who is um, maybe not even be do as well, but like a good personality overcome something. You're just like, yeah, everyone loves the underdog, especially even more so if they're like good. The, the people with the good personalities and the love, loving, caring mentality. Oh, it's fantastic. You can be a great athlete, be a jerk, and get through it. Like, yeah, 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 so-and-so, whatever, so-and-so got over the eye roll, right? But as we said before, definitely is something you see more of in OCR is the good, really good people. I mean, you don't typically come out here and struggle through something like this and not have a big heart. Yeah. And that's kind of where you get that, that strength to struggle through is having a big heart, I think, most of the time. I like Marjorie's technique. So this is not a technique I've seen on this grip. Look at this. She's wow. leaning back. She's leaning back as she, she's using her body weight. How have I never seen this technique? <laughs> I did not teach her this either. That's interesting. It's gripping it and then dropping your body down to use your body weight instead of actually taxing your forearms. Yeah. 
props yeah. to her. That's brilliant. So we've seen uh, Lisa. She's trying to run up the wall with the bag. And we saw some other people just like do a clean over their, you know, backwards and just curl that thing up there. So she's trying to. One of the other techniques they could do here is, man, they could squat down. Yeah, show. that's what I was just <laughs> about to say. Turn around, squat down. Nope, that's not what I'm yeah, saying. Like a hoist over, your, yeah, over yeah. your head. Turn around, back to the obstacle, squat down, explode up, throw it over your head, over backwards. You can just swing it. You could gain momentum almost like a kettlebell swing, yeah. right? Almost like you could grab it. Let me see if I can demonstrate. I can't actually. I'm not lifting anything. I don't know if you should be demonstrating this Yeah, right I shouldn't be demonstrating anything. But you could, you could bend down. You could oh, swing not, it like a kettlebell. At you either. If you want to, here, we'll give you a, there you go. Okay, yeah. You can almost like kettlebell swing it, right? So, you, so then once you get this momentum going, you could squat down and then just use all, it over power up. Yeah, power up, explode off, and throw it behind you, and it'll get it over. Because otherwise, it almost looks like uh, a lot of people came up to that with a sandbag and like trying to free throw it, like a free oh, throw, Lisa. right? She's trying to run up it. She better not get stuck here. She better not get stuck here. She is almost here. She's in second place. It's going to be her best race ever. Here comes another open wave, lady. See, using that momentum that I was talking about. But that's not. Oh, no, she didn't commit. She hesitated. Sideways like that is not an easy throw. No, no, that's way harder. But the idea of using that momentum and that swing, that could be good. All right, Lisa, come on. <laughs> that could potentially work, having a, a run and then throw, like get a foot up. And added props to Lisa Nondorf. Look, she looks really young, but she's a master's athlete. Yeah. Here she is killing it. Facing second place over, uh, overall, right? That's right. For female. Oh, goodness. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> so it just rolled back backwards down, down the wall. Yeah. That grabbed our attention. <laughs> oh, almost. Yeah, if you can get it to just hook right on the top of that lip. And keep in mind, I say you can squat down and throw it up. But for some people, they don't have the hip mobility to squat below parallel so they can explode up and throw the, sand, uh, the sandbag over, right? That's true. This is why it is one of the things that um, wall balls is actually good practicing for. But keep in mind, this obstacle, as far as I know, is oh, that's it. Is almost is almost uh, specific to just battle of the lions. That's right. And um, the closest you're gonna get is cornhole and savage race, right? With a slam ball. Yeah. The deal. You gotta squat right. down, throw that up in there. Some people are tall enough that they can just like free throw it into the hole. But that, once again, that was the first I've seen that in OCR, when Savage Race first started doing it. So it's it's not common. We don't usually have to practice many wall balls, things like that. But He's I'm actually going to compete in high rocks. So I've been practicing lots of wall balls. Oh, good. Cool. She's through. Great job, Lisa. Making it through. So you can tell the look on her face, man. She is, she is tired. No. She is tired. <laughs> okay, we got a point in view here. Here yeah. comes Megan Beck taking another attempt at the rig. Now here you can see she's also not only grabbing the middle of the, but she was also grabbing the, the edge of that wheel where it holds the ropes in between it. Because it's a slightly larger, you know, it's a larger c cylinder. So sometimes it's easier to get a little better grip on that. But she's using both pieces of it. You were a little fresh when you first did it. And <laughs> when your grip is taxed as much as I'm sure hers is, that is a long, a long twist. A long way to curl that thing up. Hey there, you made it. Congratulations, baby. When you finish the, go finish the course. Yeah, what are you doing? Hey. A wonderful, wonderful strategy. We were watching you do the grip there. You grab the hold and then you use your body to drop down instead of using your forearms. That was brilliant. Nobody has done that. I've never seen anyone do that. Yeah, fantastic, babe. I'm jealous I didn't teach you that. The guy who writes, uh, teaches, trains the OCR athletes. And Lisa is just, you know, getting through this. I'm sure at this point she's just hot. And so tired, but she's getting through it. 
and she's only got two more. There's two of these walls. I didn't realize. Oh, man. So she can get it the same way she did before, and it's stuck. That's good. Oh, that's get up there barely hanging down. on. Yeah. I'd be afraid to hit that board too hard. <laughs> I'd be afraid. So we've actually got two cameras over there right now. And point of view. Oh, this is what production Video. <laughs> yes, yes. Sir. how's it going, Mr. Shelling? Good to see you, man. Did it slide back down on us? You see me on Lone Star Spartans, Miles Keller. Miles Keller, been yeah. around, yeah. You see me around. I think I don't post too much, like but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Faces That's what we were races. just talking about. Everyone gets to know everyone in OCR. Yeah, everyone just sees my camera shot. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good day. I think her bag slid back down whenever she jumped up to, uh, to go get it. So now uh, she's got to she's got to do it again. Okay, hey, look, Zane is really close. Let's cut over. Let's cut over the camera three. Look how he's getting really close. Come on, man, you're almost there. You're almost there. I love to see the third place male. No, no. Oh, bummer. Yeah, I, I feel so like close. he's just not sure what to do right there. Like he's, he didn't really even make an attempt to go grab. So it makes me wonder if he's still just trying to figure out what do I, what should I do next? Like yeah. what is the next step? I, I'm, I'm not familiar with this gentleman. I don't know his obstacle proficiency. I don't know uh, how much he knows about the obstacles. Because at this point, it is more figuring it out than it is, um, you know, brute forcing it through it. Because you're so tired, you got to figure out the most efficient way. Miranda, I, I'm sure she's. Galia we, and Miranda, both moms, by the way. Yeah, amazing. And I, I think they were really would have expected to make it through. I think Miranda probably figured she. I figured she would have made it through the first time. Lisa's got her bag over. Yeah, yeah. Miranda doesn't normally miss obstacles. She has a really good obstacle proficiency, but I know I through our conversations with her is that one of the main deals she does to battle out these obstacles is she's been at this over and over. She's not giving up because she wants to set that example for her daughter, Emberly. That's right. Is her daughter here today? No, her daughter is not here. Her daughter and husband are at home, I believe. Maybe watching right now. Yeah. She's got good technique getting through here. And Dude. she can, if she can rest on those wheels like she's been doing, I don't know. Once you get that sit up on the wheel that they've been doing, is it does it just feel rough, or does it actually save your grip a little bit? Lisa's on. Lisa is through that uh, wall set of walls. Not much further with this wreck, this uh, horse five bag, and then she'll be over here at the finish. If you have to chicken wing it right there, this is not gonna. This is gonna be hard. If you have the chicken wing at this point, your grip is not the return. Of course, her hands just might be torn. It might not be a matter of her grip, but her trying to conserve, having to touch any kind of element. It's possible, but she's probably going to try and sit up and save her grip uh, as she's been doing previously. Yep, yep, yep there we go. Stick both her feet Union break. <laughs> the union break. <laughs> I love it. It was so cute last weekend watching her daughter cross the finish line with her at Savage Race. She got third place yeah. uh, pro female. And watching her daughter uh, go over the finish line with her, um, I know that it meant the world to her. We'll have to get Vivian. I'm sure Vivian's probably back there at the rig rooting on her boyfriend, TJ. Oh, here comes Marjorie over the wall, warped wall. You got it, babe. And Lisa? You guys just keep trying, honey. Through the last, she's coming here to the last set of obstacles. This is going to be a, a hard-fought second place for her. Did she make it over the wall? The same bag, Lisa? She did. Okay. She's walking up to... Yeah, she right is now. spent. She is so spent. <laughs> All right, here comes Marjorie over the warp wall, crossing the finish line. That's what I'm talking about. 
Let me tell you, the work wall is harder when you're shorter. She's <laughs> not. She's not the tallest woman. She's like five two, five four, but that's not an easy work wall to get across. <laughs> Way to go! All right, we do have Lisa coming in. Hey. Uh, sign up for kids to do an obstacle course. Yeah, yeah, you are in the right place. Uh, go speak to David over there by the um, by the past the finish line for the, the youth. The guy with his hat on backwards. Okay, cool. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome, Marjorie. Honey, you want to tell us all about what you thought about this course? <laughs> She's pulling the chair up. Okay. Uh, fine. Oh, come come over here. Come on, get in the get in the. Get in the shot. Come over here so people can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. You just crossed the finish line. Don't catch your breath. That's fair. We'll get her. We'll get her. I'll look on the course here in a little bit while we're waiting. Here comes Lisa coming through anchors away. Yeah, she'll make quick work of anchors away. No big deal. Yeah, she's got it. She's got one last. Actually, Marjorie will be able to tell us in a second which one's harder, stairway or the warp wall. So. so we also have uh, your wife April sitting here outside the tent as well. One of my favorite Instagram uh, ones to follow was uh, the race wife. Was it struggles of a struggles, of a, struggles of a race wife? Is hilarious. Have you been updating that at all? Yeah, you retired it. Oh, I miss it. I miss it. Bring it back. Bring it back. It is still up there. It so is still up there. You want to check it, yeah. it out? Go Instagram. Look for struggles of a race wife. She's got a lot of really great, funny memes and stuff like that. Anybody that has a a racer spouse uh, will definitely relate. Yeah. And understand. She's been very supportive. Killer OCR wife. She did it for me. Um, three of my here we come. Four here we go. Stuff here we go. Stairway 2.0. Lisa coming on behind us. There she goes. She is using the two-hand oh, technique. Come on. Yep. Come on. Keep in come mind, on. man, her grip is shot at this point, but she's already at the top. Yeah, it's a long drop. Ugh. That's going to be tricky to get through. It's okay, Lisa. Just let your grip come back. You got time. No one's behind you. last you know this obstacle and then honestly at this point when you're that tired that oh that's daunting when you're tired this is second place right second place female yes second place female second place david at this point the 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 bag hoist over the the poles is going to be hard the bag. The, oh my uh, God, that's a good point. The She's got to go back and explode that. That's an absolutely good point. Well, I'm hoping. Look, I, I have confidence that she'll make it through that. But she, right now, she needs to focus on getting through this. She's got right. time. She's beat. Yep. To uh, you know what and back, man. Nobody's gotten through the low rig yet. No third. No no third place in sight. Basically, they're still working on it. And I know they're going to try their best to not give up. Now, what she can do here, actually, seeing how her grip is so broke, if she could just dead hang and get a swing going on without locking off or using her arms, she can create the swing. And then at the apex of the back swing, if she is facing away from, facing away from the obstacle as you grab the T-bar, as it comes up, reach up at the apex of the swing. That's all you got to do. You don't actually have to pull up here because that whole T-bar swings. That's true. That's the only, I mean, that might be the best bet for her if your grip is totally shot. And these, these being, you know, steps, they're not actual steps. They're more like two by fours. But the fact that it's not a bar that you can grab is definitely something that makes that even trickier. So yes, you can dead hang, but that dead hang grip is going to be harder than a you know, lock off grip because it's a flat hole. I don't, I don't know. I'm not totally convinced now, about that. I could be totally wrong. It but sideways, I'm... you know, one hand on both sides of yeah. the of the step is definitely the way to go because you're you're 
you're pu pulling, uh, you're pushing into, you're pushing from both sides rather than slipping off of one side. But it still makes it tricky. So you're right. You got to get a big swing. But that's something that, you know, it takes skill. It takes, uh, yeah. and, and when you're this tired, maybe that pullback is just not there. Now, I wonder if in the rule book you can actually uh, touch the, tr not the trust, but the section where it, it braces the hole at the top of the T-bar. I wonder if you can touch, because I've seen this now. The at vertical the, piece? Yeah, I was covering the grid games a few months ago, and people uh, were doing that. They were grabbing above the T-bar section. There's a little, uh, I'm not quite missing the name yeah, for the it. Just vertical. But. Here she goes. She's gonna, we're going to see her give it an attempt here in just a second. She's trying what, you're, what you were actually describing as a dead hang, hanging swing. Budge. We're actually we're getting we're getting somebody giving us uh, I believe that's AC. AC's got something for us. Where's your uh, your piece? Right here. Yes. I'm sorry. Let's see what AC's got. AC, go ahead and give us an update on what your. Did somebody make it through? Did we miss it? <laughs> Let's see. AC. See if a rabbit can hear us. Hang on. Uh, is he? He's not alive. Okay. AC, give us an update. Can you hear me? Can y'all yes, hear me? We sure can. Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, Jason, yes, can y'all hear, hear me? You. Yeah, we sure can, AC. We can hear you. Okay. Miranda, Deborah Zane. Okay. Deborah, Zane, and Miranda have called it. Oh, uh, so there's no third place male. Oh, uh, bummer. Um, Deborah Zane oh, is now Miranda down to called it. Oh, wow. Maggie and there is no yeah it's just down to uh, Megan right there this is it these are the only trainer these are the only two left and yeah. Dahlia thank you AC for that update yeah thank you so much for the update is he still talking nope he's not talking anymore uh, Wow. okay well I mean hey they battled it out and struggled and struggled and struggled um, it was not for a lack of trying they've oh, been there for over an hour and a half at least right yeah at that spot yeah i would say so and so hopefully lisa lisa's gonna make it i feel common she's gonna make it through this look she's in second place podium contention the finish line's right in front of her and you can I, see lisa when, doesn't give up for anything and you can see when she does the, the the dead hang swing just like you're saying she's got the the rhythm for it it's just not missing a grab yeah, you, you make a slip up and you, you've got your grips gone, so you miss, and you're gonna fall off if you miss. But as long as she can get steady, you know, matching hands the whole way, then she'll make it through. More open waivers coming up to the, the warp wall, having a good time. Here she goes. You see how she's maximizing. By using the momentum, she is getting good to be able here. to. Yeah, those are really good swings. By reaching the apex. Oh, that is a tough spot there. Come on. Okay, that is a Come tough on. grip oh, to be holding. Oh no! It. See, what well, you guys? I'm not sure if you notice here, guys. Her hands placement change on. She was able to do a hold on the front and back on the first part on the vertical going up, but on the decline, she changed the grip to just on the front section of the T bar. So just like this. Now with that momentum going, it's a lot less secure than opposed to holding the hand, the grip like this and moving down. So yeah, it but her really, grip is shot. At this point, if, when you're coming down, you, you might as well chicken wing it or, or hook your arm all the way, or not necessarily chicken yeah. wing, but you hook your arm yeah. around it. Or at the very least, uh, if you can, you know, opposite hands. Same way she went up is the way you kind of want yeah, to go down. go down. Yeah, it's just hard because that is a pretty big gap at the top. That gap is bigger than what they had at OCRWC. Yeah, you're gonna have to use that swing. But keep in mind, it, she made it look effortless going up because she was maximizing on that efficiency of that forward swing on the forward swing. Excuse That's right. me. Here we can lower the uh, rabbit's mics. Yeah. Number one's pretty low. That right there is what OCR is all about, man. 
you're going to struggle. You're going to push through. You're not giving up. Now, obviously, with the other races, if you're new, if you're new to watching this, you're new to obstacle course racing. There's races that are not mandatory completion. They just have obstacles have penalties. You could have everything from a burpee penalty to a, a run that you have to do to uh, silly things in Tough Mudder. Like, don't they have one where you have the kids bouncy ball and you got to take that, that bouncy yeah. ball through a little, a little, right, a little loop? Yeah, yeah. The horse thing, what's it called? Yeah, just a little, a little bouncy bobber. Or I don't know what you call it. <laughs> we don't know the name. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so, you know, you won't see people stuck. But this is a mandatory completion race. They've signed up for the Pro Wave. So here it is indeed mandatory completion race. You can't have anyone uh, assist you through the obstacle. Now, if you want to come through and do this for fun and go through the open wave, you can absolutely get someone to assist you. Or if she was in the open wave, she could stand on her husband's shoulders while he walks through it, right? That'd be totally fine. But she's going to keep bailing yeah. out. She's going to get so it. So our cameraman, Kevin, is coming to get an update. Miranda and who was it else? Miranda, Josh? Zane, and uh, Miranda, Zane, and... Um, no, Megan is still there. Vivian's, OCR Vivian's boyfriend. No, Megan's still there. Oh, She's TJ? still trying. Galia TJ. and Megan Beck are still OCR there girl. doing it. What about TJ? But uh, TJ? I haven't seen TJ. He may have. I yeah, he may have. He may TJ have quit. Went on as well. Yeah, he may have went on as well. Well, it's getting later on the day. They've been battling out for over an hour and a half. You know, hey, they're getting texts. And keep in mind, hey, man, people got things to do, too. Yeah. <laughs> this, no one's getting paid for this. This is ultimately for fun and pushing yourself, seeing what you can do, right? Yeah. Uh, getting out of your comfort zone, getting stronger every day. But like I said, all those ladies, mothers, they got, they got stuff they need to do. Those guys, a lot of those guys, fathers, hey, they got stuff they need to do, prepare for the week. Yeah, hopefully they get a, a break later today. Yeah, and I, I'm for, I'm fortunate. For the of the day, I'm fortunate with my lovely wife and I. Uh, it's not our weekend to have the kids. Our kids are with the other parent, so we have the weekend to ourselves. And so we could be out here all day long. We could have a, it's kind of cool. You know, we were talking about uh, how long do they have? Is there an expiration time that they have to stop running the course or give up? And Sid was out there when somebody asked that, and he said, no, we don't have one. I'll be here all day. <laughs> I'll be here all day. That's right. <laughs> he, he's the kind of guy that, you know, he's willing to stay out here all day and let somebody just fight for it the whole time until they finish. That's fantastic. That's absolutely great. Yeah, it mo like, like you were mentioning, Savage Race normally has a cutoff. I think it's uh, what, uh, two and a half hours from the start time. Because keep in mind, too, also, you're, Savage you're waiting. Decently, it's like three to five hours. Somewhere. It's not short. It's no, a, it's six it's miles. It's Savage yeah, Race the, is six miles. But they're, uh, how, how long you have before you or the cutoff. Oh, okay. Is, is yeah, like, yeah. It might be four hours, five hours. Are you it's, sure? It's. I think they changed. Well, you know what? It, it did change, change recently, but it was like an hour different yeah. from what it was. Yeah. But so they'll, uh, and, and that's also to the point in which you can have, a, they're waiting on that podiums. Yeah. Right? But the other people that already finish, and the people need to do the course breakdown oh. and everything, they're waiting to have the podium. A, we got a shot here. Oh, no, she didn't. We had a. Where is she? <clears throat> I don't see her. She, I, I thought we. She was. She was on the trailer. Her, okay. I think she went around. I'm turning around to see it. Like that's like that's helping. But okay. Well, we've got uh, our cameraman are going to see something. Oh, they're grabbing some. Let's water. switch over to uh, while you're doing. Let's switch over quick to C three. Brandon's taking the union break. Oh no, Megan. <laughs> that's right. I forgot to say Miranda moved on. Yeah. You know what I did? Uh, I remember when Battle Frog was around. No, excuse me, OCR World Championships. I remember one time I lost my band. I, I mean, went we back. Got, I took my we got band. This and we got afterwards, I, you know, I went and finished the race. I had given up my band. You're good. This is many years ago. And I went back and I got my band from the pile of bands. And I took it home and I framed it. Broken? To this broken okay. cut. And to this day, it hangs up in the garage gym, framed along with a map. Of the OCR World Championship, <laughs> and so I never, uh, I never forget that because that many of these ladies have uh, maybe got stuck there, have given up their band at one time, and it usually takes one time, maybe two times of doing that. You're like, I'm never giving up my band again. I'll be there all frigging day long. And look at what we're seeing now. We're seeing 
one person sitting on the obstacle letting the grip rest but seeing lisa go take a, a walk break to you know just think it through let the grip rest but they're still fighting they're not giving up but they've tried it enough times that you have to take these breaks in between or else you just don't have anything to left to give. Well, the finish line is right there in front of me. Like I said, two more obstacles. You got the sandbag over the bar, and the uh, and the warp wall, and that's it. And we'll 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 wait with Lisa too. You know, we've got we've got time. Lisa's taking a. I'm I'll sure be here as long as you guys got, want. <laughs> I got I got all day long. Got my lovely with. Yeah, she had surgery really? advice. Wow. Said yeah, Lisa was, a, but she's good. That's been a while. It's healed, but it's still like. You know, yeah, when you're used to, when you're used to, when any, someone has an injury and even though they may have had surgery and it's healed and they're ready to go again, it's still in the back of their head. I was talking about that with Chris Baldwin recently. We had surgery a long time ago, back in his college days. And to this day, when you move that muscle or that part of your body that was previously injured, it's in your head, man. Yeah. And that can, you know, it can totally take a toll physically. Fortunately, at this point, we're not getting much action. I think Lisa's just going to, I don't know, who knows how long she'll take a break for, but it, it could be she might wait 10, 15 minutes before she tries again. Maybe, who knows? Well, I want to hear I want to hear more about the course. Can we get Marjorie in here and kind of give her someone who ran through the yeah, open absolutely. wave? Maybe kind of tell us more about the... Kevin didn't tell you what to do with the You ran the whole course, right, Kevin? Uh, Look, well, yeah, Hey, you can actually talk from over here. Oh, okay. Here, I'm going to get Marjorie mic'd up that we can kind of get an idea. Hello. I kind of want to hear. So this is Marjorie Keller. Hi, guys. And my, my beautiful, lovely wife. I've been shouting you out the whole time. It's, so take us through the course. Tell us all about it. How was the terrain? So it was pretty mild until you do get past that low rig that everybody's stuck at. And then it turns into crazy land. Oh, no way. Up and down the creek, rope here, rope there. And you're like, okay. Cool. Yeah, how hard was it to get up and in and out of the, the so creek? Because like I heard really it's really steep. Really thin rope. Um, really thin rope. Really steep. And like it falls apart when you step up and down it. Um, and then there was a creek crossing. Like you don't really have to go across the creek, but alongside the creek. Yeah. We saw um, that Kevin goes, was running along that on the video. The water? Yes, the water. It, you're still by the bank, but it goes up to here. Oh, wow. The water does. Okay, so that and we then, didn't see. Right. I'm amazed there's that much water because it's been a, quite a bit of a but drought. I'm taking the, a camera with me. Or like yeah, one of y'all's cameras. <laughs> That's I, what we were I saying. Video on my camera. You, you always snap everything. You always recording everything. I thought I should have gave you a, 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 a mic to go through. Yeah, live feed. For the rest of the course. Yeah, so it went oh, yeah, the crazy way. I like it. Like, it's not just one, two, one, two, up and down, up and down the creek. It's probably, like, I would say at least four using the rope up and down the creek. There are lots of thorns and ducking over. Yeah, trees. how are your legs? How are the thorns? Oh, yeah, the socks work really great. You the wore the tall, the long socks. That's what I was saying earlier. That's just, that's just if you know the terrain and, somehow, it, it lets you and know when, that. when there's nobody behind you, I mean, you can just take your time. And not hurt yourself but vivian was like running like i saw she's got scratches everywhere <laughs> from the thorns yeah but i can't imagine having somebody behind you going through all those thorns you'd be you'd have scratches all over for sure but without somebody chasing you like you can take your time and be a little more careful yeah for sure yeah. but how are they were there any obstacles that you didn't think were going to be difficult that ended up being more difficult other than obviously the, the low rig i cannot believe the uh besides the low rig the sandbag going up the wall, or like having a like throw. How it heavy? Over. How, how heavy it's was that? Because heavy. Lisa got stuck there too. It's not heavy. It's like tall and having a hoist. It it's up. just a lot taller than it I looks in the video. I I'm, I'm open waves. So I yeah. cheated and used the stairs. Or there's no stairs. The stairs? Where there's are the no stairs? There's no stairs, but like in between the boards, like where the holes are. Oh yeah. I use those. <laughs> That's okay. You're in the open wave. You're just doing and it for I, fun. Yeah, and I have the sandbag on my back as I'm going. Okay, that's cool. But yeah, that was that was surprisingly harder than I thought. 
Oh, yeah. Well, and I noticed, so that's why I was asking Sydney tried, Paul Morris. So, so I tried to throw it over in front of me. It didn't go over. It didn't even touch the top of the... the you tried squatting board. down and then throwing tried, it back up. And then Kevin said, oh, face it backwards and throw it over your head. And get it just wasn't going. I didn't get that far either. Did you get Did you get these sandbags over the... the... I feel like if it was the, the ball to where it's like the weight of it was more centered, it would have went over like better. But since it's like that long sandbag that kind of flipped it. Like, yeah, flimsy. it's awkward. It's flimsy. It's harder. So. Okay. Guys, I think we are going to call it at this point. We are, what was that? Three hours and 40 minutes in. Yep, it's a... The only the Larry's only pro the athletes house. left on the course the the are Megan Down back Down Megan lately. Beck and the Dahlia Dahlia Goya at the at the low rig. They are not giving up. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna keep the feed going all day long, but uh, you can better uh, you can bet your bet your bits that these these two ladies we're gonna keep battling out until they have to leave. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so. First place male, we had Jason Rich. Second place male was Doug Snyder. And no third place male. You know, that's uh, the way these races go sometimes. And uh, Sid's over there napping because he doesn't have to do the rig right now. <laughs> that's <so>. right. <laughs> He's going to let them uh, try as long as they want. And keep in mind, like you said, we were talking to Sidney Paul Morris. And, hey, he was at 3 a.m. Yeah. Put together the low rig. I'm sure. Which ended up being the game changer for the entire race. That's right. So if he was up at 3 a.m., I'm not sure that man slept at all. He's got to be tired as can so what be. What was saying was he wasn't even going to use that low rig because he was sleeping around it. And then at 3 a.m. he decided, oh, let's, yeah. let's put this together. Yep, he changed it last minute. He put it together. So, yes, we are going to call it here. Uh, first place female, Vivian Tran. Almost got a second place female. Well, we will uh, you know, post results for the race later on. So hopefully we've got a podium to fill out. But... You never know. It, it might not. It might be one, two people. That's it. Yeah, I would feel confident too. Lisa, she has really good obstacle proficiency. I promise you, she's gonna sit there. She's gonna rest. Her grip's gonna come back. She's gonna make it through. Stairway 2.0. She'll yeah. take second place because the other two obstacles obviously will not stop her from crossing the finish line. It's just a matter of hey, waiting it out, letting your grip come back. And I do. I know we do still have some people watching <laughs> to see if if Lisa makes it through this. So apologies that we won't uh, be able to show that. But thank you guys for watching with us today. It's been a blast. Miles, thank you so much for joining Jason, me. Always a pleasure. You and me have done it quite a bit. Uh, here's to many more. And I was Absolutely. letting everyone know, hey, there's a lot more races uh, with coverage coming up soon. That's what right. What do we got coming up in the shoot? Next weekend is the Spartan National Series race, the last race in the series in Blue Mountain in Canada. So I'll be there for that as well. So tune in for next Saturday for that. Uh, I believe that race starts at 7.30 Eastern time a.m. And isn't there one more? And then the weekend after that, Toughest Mudder Dallas. Yeah. Or Tough Mudder, sorry. Tough Mudder Dallas, Tough Mudder Infinity is happening. And I'm going to be on course with a friend running just to show you guys what it's like. So it's going to be a, like, all day. One camera, just me running with the camera. But it's going to be an all-day stream while we run from start to finish. And what is the Tough Mudder Infinity? Tough Mudder Infinity is their multi-lap during the day. So, you know, toughest is at night. World's toughest is 24 hours. Yeah. This is a about an eight-hour period. As eight many laps period. as you can get. Yeah. Now, a really interesting thing about it is you've got a choice. You do the 15K lap loop first. Then from there, you can do a 5K or 10K if they have it. But you get to choose. Which course do you take each time after that first course? It's kind of like a your little choose your own adventure. Well, I went, there's probably more obstacles on the shorter loop to make it give you a strategy there. Because obviously, right. hey, if you're trying to do as many loops as possible, you're going to go for the short one. That is where the but, strategy comes in. There's got to be, yeah, there's got to be a catch to that. Yeah. Pretty it's cool. It. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. Thanks and for joining. After that, World's Toughest Mudder won't be on our YouTube page. It'll actually be on Tough Mudder's YouTube page. But we will be there producing that. Will Hicks is actually going to be commentating on that one, so it's going to be really fun to watch. Yeah, it'd be wonderful. Will is All 24 fantastic. hours. Okay, can't wait. Thank you all for joining us. See you at the next one.